All right, I will call the Finance Committee meeting to order for April 16th, 2024 at 5.08 p.m. I'll call the Slickman's meeting to order at 5.08 p.m. Great. Um, first order is minutes. We got minutes emailed this afternoon-ish. Um, did people have a chance to look at them or do we want another week? Okay. I had a chance to look at them. I looked at them. Okay, you weren't here, so. <laughs> Getting no response. Okay. All right. We have a second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining? That passes four zero three. Right. Okay. Next item is, I think, the SCEMS budget. Okay. So, uh, new uh, budget was handed out to you tonight. Um, I have that in my um, tab. So, this is reflecting um, a Deerfield assessment of $444,368. We have a motion for that. I'll make a motion to approve the SCEMS Enterprise Fund new budget. Uh, Deerfield share $444,368. Okay, do we have a second? Second. All right. Um, discussion. So what's the difference? So this basically, maybe Tim can speak to it or Carolyn can better than I, but this basically reflects um, a harder look at payroll and, and a more um, true reflection of what, probably what will happen in fiscal year 25, knowing how long it takes for changes to happen that he would like to put into place. I also know that um, his intent somewhere down the road is to be able to do a lot of their training in-house. Um, so I'm not sure how much of that is reflected in this budget, but there was a harder look at what, what will probably be spent versus what they'd like to spend and, and thus the reduction. Um, I just wanna say that we're still working on the budget Yeah. Let me let me just update. I, I just texted Joshua, who's presenting the Waitley Finance Committee tonight, I believe. And I believe he's 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 said that this is the budget he is this is what he considers to be final at this point. Yes. Okay. And yeah. um talked to him today too. Yeah. Um they, I think if I understood Brenda correctly, there was an eighty thousand dollar figure that was in one place that should have been should have been in another place. Is that yeah? We're using eighty thousand dollars of retained earnings. Um, Josh had just put it on on the operational reserve line, so it looked like it was something that needed to be added into expenditures. And, and once we discussed it, he realized um, the error, and so I took it out. I thought he was still working. What's that? Send the one. This this he felt was was final. Okay. So I. I know I know he's had some discussions with Wade Lee. I'm not sure how much more he's discussed with Sunderland at this point. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. If it's a reduced budget, everybody will be more happy. I so, would hope. Yeah. Any questions or discussion, anybody? No. It was pretty much all in personnel where it went down. Absolutely. Yes, it is. And primarily full-time staff. 
Is that right? Primarily full time staff. Yeah. Okay. I believe so. I, I so thought overtime. also overtime change. Yeah. It's not overtime. Okay. Yeah. A little bit of change there. Benefits are down to 20,000. Yeah, he originally had a cushion in there of 20000 for anybody that might come on that would have health insurance, um, and he chose to remove that cushion. Um, is the 347, 345, that's a total of the five lines below it? Is that right? Um, the, I'm not sure. Oh, the three, yes, it's it's just the Medicare tax, the life insurance, the medical insurance, retirement, and workers' comp. Okay, so it's medical insurance that went down. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, it went down from what he what what was proposed. Right. Yeah. Because he was just proposing a number. Well, and I and I, you know, that speaks to the fact that. Um, he has plans for staffing, but by the time someone is hired, um, there's not going to be a full year of insurance if they do take the insurance, and who knows what will happen to other people's insurance, or, you know, he just decided to leave it out. Yep. I think he was trying to be conservative, but... Right. Well, he knew... Um, what a change this was from last year. And so we're trying to trying to make it more mental. You said that the slight change in their operating was just a formula error? Uh, no, I don't think so. No. I, I think he actually increased one line item. Okay. Um, I can't remember now what that line item was, but it it's made, small. It made sense to me. Um, it was uh, the radio system piece. Um, I think he was just budgeting for what he was thinking the increase would be. Okay. And he feels comfortable with this, otherwise he wouldn't have presented it. What's that? He feels good about this, otherwise he wouldn't have presented he it. He does. He does feel good about this. Um, had some discussions with um, one of the Waitley Town administrators last week, he's meeting with their finance committee tonight, tonight. is what Tim yeah. was saying. Um, uh, I think they were very receptive. I'm just not sure about Sunderland. Yeah, no, I. we have to worry about Sunderland a little bit. I, I just sent a text to Tom Fighting Kevich, who's the head of the boo, to ask if some, where Sunderland is on this, but I have gotten a response. I may not. I'm not sure if Tom is traveling or something. Well, they're not going to come back and ask for more. No. <laughs> and on the bright side, the January one was 532,873 for Deerfield, and it's come down considerably. It so has, that's. Yeah, considerably. Um, it, worst case scenario, if it's not approved by one of the other towns, um, it, um, and there results a lower budget number for scams, um, we're only on the, the hook for what is ultimately approved, correct? I mean, we wouldn't have to. Oh, that's correct, Margaret. Yeah. We, we're going to pay 50% or 50, what is it, 51%? Of oh, whatever the final. If one of the other towns doesn't approve, I'm still going to bill them. Uh, so then they can do. <laughs> Not for the higher amount, though. Well, no, I no for, right? the, for the amount that's been approved. Okay. By, by town yeah. It is interesting that last year you I don't know if you were involved last year, but there was the discussion of the nuclear option um, because Deerfield was asking for questions about overtime and um, somebody brought up, well, uh, you know, hey, if if two towns approve it and you don't, then we can just dissolve this. I think that's what was said. I can't remember that. And it is it's in the agreement, the scams agreement that if two towns approve and one doesn't, then that town can get kicked out of scams. Okay. That's um, right. I forgot so, about that. that yeah. okay. No, we're not thinking of that. We're it's, not, yeah, we're not recommending that. Yeah, that is is the month. The yeah. Month. So we need to kind of all come to it. I just want to say that we're trying to be sensitive to Sunderland's financial yeah. Yeah. situation. Yeah, and absolutely. There might be 
a further reduction, who knows? And if there's a further reduction, we can make that on town meeting floor if we don't get it in here before that. So. Right. Right. It's not going to be more, clearly. Right. <laughs> Any other questions about this? Yeah. Discussion. All right. All those in favor? That's unanimous, 700. You all need to vote? Yeah, so um, do you want us to vote on this? I can see why not. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the SCEMS budget um, as presented uh, for $44,000. $444,368. Second. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, so that's it for budget, individual budget line items, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you've got the prior year bills and the and the opioid money, but that's all. That'll be part of the warrant. Yeah. Okay. Um, very briefly. Yeah, shoot. Yeah, um, and then the capital. And then the capital. We talked about the I capital. I, I did give you a capital uh, spreadsheet, but so did Casey, so you could, you know, work off of. Um, I have a whole section here. I think, I Casey, did you plug that, that uh, table into the warrant? By chance, the capital table. Yeah. No. Not the board yet. needs to discuss it tomorrow night. Okay. I'm hoping that if we look at this today, because it will get plugged in. That's the intent, is to plug it into the warrant directly, so we don't have to direct people's attention to a specific place they can find it. Um, there are several items you'll notice on the table that are color coded with questions. Um, in some cases, I don't think. There's at least two that don't need to be appropriated, so don't require a town meeting vote. Um, and in two cases, we found out that funding could go through a different source. Casey, can you let me share my screen, please? One sec. Should be good to go. Okay, thanks. All right, so we've seen this before. This is the same thing I showed before. So here is our revenues. Um, so we have our total revenues excluding free cash, our free cash and the library trust, which is like 3,800 uh, bucks for our total revenues. If we subtract our omnibus budget from our total revenues, excluding free cash, um, we're using 170,189 in free cash to support our total revenues. Our warrant articles is 725. So our total budget is 19 million, so that leaves 321,000 in free cash. We're using 101,500 of that for capital, which leaves us 219,558 in free cash. So we voted, I don't know when, last week or the week before or something, that we wanted at least 200,000 left in free cash. So this budget that we've just gone through, um, assuming we approve all the warrant items as they are, leaves us 219,000 in free cash. I mean, any questions or comments on that? Yeah. No. Okay. Excellent. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. There we go. Okay. Um, let's go to the warrant. Is there yeah. a way to compare that to last year? You bet. You bet. You bet. Absolutely. Um, I have to get up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, share my screen. I just got to find it. 
Okay, so here's 2025. Um, here's our 170,189 in free cash that we're using this year for our omnibus budget. And then just because this is what I've done in previous years, I also added the EMS. So here's our total dollars in free cash we, if we add EMS. This doesn't include Smith vote, um, which probably it should. So if you go back year by year, we're at 170,000 for the omnibus right now. Last year was 52, 38, eight. So we were doing pretty well. And then we kind of started to lose it. Way back in the day, we were at 340, 300, whatever thousand. So um, we're better than we were 10 years ago, but we're kind of losing the losing the bubble again right now. How, how come it doesn't include Smith Vogue, Julie? Just because I didn't add it in, I oh. can. <laughs> Well, so this this free cash line right here, this is our omnibus budget that will not include Smith vote, but it also doesn't include EMS. I added EMS just because I did. So this dollar value right here includes EMS. I mean, I could add in Smith vote too, which I, I mean, in my opinion, that's a that's a recurring expense that ought to be in there. Um, I just. Didn't have it done. In your prior spreadsheet um, for the use of free cash, that, that did include Smith vote, correct? Smith vote is in this warrant article okay. line item right here. Okay. Yeah. So this 170, 189 does not include it. Okay. But it is in this the warrant article. This 219,558 does. Okay. What's the warrant article? Smith Vogue EMS, um, the, the, reserve fund. Fund, the reserve fund, okay. um, all of the warrant articles. Uh, OPEP. Right, not, not. And Julie, between, between this one and the one you just showed us where a free cash was at 219 here and it went 170 there, you said, no, no, it's at 170 no. here. So I'm using $170,000 oh, okay. so in free okay. cash. This is it. not, yeah, in, I, it's the to... 219 in the yeah. bin. And I think as a side note, uh, the omnibus buzz budget used to include a lot less than it does today. So uh, about four or five years ago, we brought in the FERCOG assessment. We brought in... Um, Oh, what else did we bring in that used to be separate warrant articles, the quinquennial certification, all of those things used to be separate articles. And I think because they wanted to be able to use free cash for all of them, but we slowly worked them into the omnibus budget so that that's all that's left that's still being uh, voted as a separate warrant article. It sounds appropriate. Uh, it sounds appropriate to have moved them into the operating yeah, budget. Yeah, it made perfect sense. Um, and there are too many articles. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, I think, I, I think it, you know, it's clear, um, it, it's clear that the budget growth is outpacing, um, is outpacing the recurring revenues growth. I mean, and that's becoming more and more evident. So, um, that's going to require some work. This is that final column. So this is our free cash that we're using for the omnibus budget plus the EMS value plus this not ingress uh maybe it's the right hand column the right hand column is uh one thing it's free cash and other so the other is like there's a little bit we're using in other that's um, wetlands and where we the, those other little pots. That oh, just using. just recently, um, there's money being pulled from the wetlands protection Isn't fund right? and from yeah. the cemetery fund. Yeah. Um, now, in past years, I know Bernie used the municipal building fund, which was from the sale of the old town hall. The old town hall. Uh, he was using that to plug his budget. Um, then after that, mm -hmm. I don't remember what we were using, but Julie, what's because I wasn't involved until what 2019, I think, or 18. 
What's the overlay called? Overlay is money that the, so I'm a little unclear about why this is positive in here. Um, so I, I need to go back and look at those, but it's money the assessors use in case, like if you get an abatement on your taxes, they use the overlay to cover your fee. They yeah, they set it. They set a certain amount aside that that is that they think is going to be uncollectible, so to speak. In a in a real business, they call that uncollectibles. But they set a certain amount aside so that it will cover any any exemptions they give or any abatements they give. And after a certain number of years, they don't use some of the old stuff. So, um, yeah. so we request. Uh, occasionally to them for them to release some of that old stuff because it's sitting back there so that money the that's the money they released those years that's right that's that's the money yeah and then okay. why has that not happened again for like the last couple of years well so uh, in 2017 we had the municipal um what's that act bond yeah Modern municipal modernization act and um then it allowed them to actually um, use abatement money or overlay money from previous years to cover the current year if they run short. So then they started um, setting a smaller amount aside. Um, whereas before, if you if you overspent one specific year, you'd have to make that up in the next tax rate. Um, so now they can they can move money between abatement years and so used to be that they would set a hundred hundred thousand to one hundred and twenty thousand aside now they're doing like sixty thousand or um on a research year it might be you know eighty thousand but certainly a lot less than what they used to set aside so that's a lot less to release Does that make sense mm -hmm. is free cash just a lack of a better word a plug to make get yeah. the money for the omnibus budget because none of these numbers Absolutely. agree with the revenue detail. I'm trying to understand what we're looking at here. They should agree yeah. with the revenue detail. Um, it's just which sections we put together. Um, so if you look at the revenue, no, the, re the revenue detail is going to include free cash that you spend on everything. It's just total free cash that you use. Second. So, so on the revenue detail, the, the free cash net is the total free cash that you've used for everything. That's that's a number I have to tie to for DOR. So uh, it's a number that gets plugged in. So it's it's free cash that you're using for everything for. For um, for all of your warrant articles as well as the omnibus budget. I guess why doesn't it agree? I'm lost. Uh, I'm lost. So, because <laughs> she's only including the omnibus not budget including, and, yeah. and stems. She's not including all the other warrant articles in this in this specific uh, view of the of the um, of the expenditures. Okay. So if you take indirects plus other. What are indirects? Indirects are, if you flip over, see where it says other funding sources on the back side at yeah. the top. Indirects are the SCEMS, the Wastewater Treatment Plant, and the South County Senior Center reimbursement for administrative costs. If you yeah. add those three together, that will equal this indirect line. 156, 100, I hope. And then other is going to be everything else in that section. So if you take 235,886 and subtract that 156, 1, you should end up with this 79, 786. The indirect uh, yeah, it's grow because it's percentage of the budget. As the budget yep. grows, it's a percentage, so it tends to grow with the budget. <clears throat> so you put overlay, you moved it for 2025 into indirects or other, right? Because there is 60,000 overlay. There is 65 in overlay 
where that is actually is right here, I think. So if we take total property taxes plus local receipts minus 65,000 for overlay. I think it says 60,000, am I? Uh, the amount that, that is anticipated that they will reserve for this year is 65000 That's like in the middle of your first page of the revenue detail. Oh, okay. <laughs> the overlay on the other page. Yeah, that's <laughs> different from the release of overlay. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> Wrong overlay. Gotcha. So to John's question, as far as free cash as a gap, it essentially is a gap because you've got a gap between the recur available recurring revenues, the net recurring available revenues, and the bottom line operating budget. We do have to plug that. And in my opinion, that's what creates a structural deficit going into the next fiscal year. Could be plugged out the monthly source of free cash not spending as much as we thought we did. One portion of, of the free cash is. That can never be guaranteed in any fiscal year. We're not robbing a fixed pot. In part, we're not robbing a fixed pot. Any other thoughts or questions or discussion on this? Nope. Okay. So we're ready for the work. All right. So I think the way we'll do it is article by article. We might as well just start at the beginning and work through. And we will, I think, for each article, take a recommendation to take a motion to recommend the article, and then we'll discuss it as a whole. So do we have a motion for Article 1? Do we do it like they do just for purposes of time? <clears throat> when we do the omnibus budget, the moderator reads off each line. If somebody doesn't like it, they say hold. And we vote them all at the end, except for things we've held. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to say um, Yes, sure. Um, we're not going to go line by line on right. when we get to that one. When we get to that one, we're going to say article whatever, no, no, just, no, just the just entire so. article. I think you meant every yeah, article. Meant the whole thing. Or at the end, we approve, except for the things we did. Put on hold. We do that. Okay, so I really don't want to do that, but okay. um, if All right, everybody else okay, wants fine. to, we're okay with it. I, I think we need to discuss each one. Okay. Um, yeah. As we go through. And if there's, I mean, it might be split. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> okay. I'd like to make a motion to recommend article one. Right? Second. Okay. Um, any discussion? Yes. As we go through um the warrant, can Casey or somebody explain what changes have been made since our last copy of the warrant? Because I think we've all read the prior version of the warrant. So just to Kind of call our attention to what's been changed. I think some of the numbers have been filled in, Margaret. Okay. I think since the last warrant, nothing in nothing in Article One changed at all, right, Casey? Right. And nothing in Article Two. Well, maybe no. I don't think anything in Article Two changed from the last. Yes, warrant. I can be happy to explain it as you guys go through each war each article. I have a, just a couple of comments on Article One. Yep. Um, gotta find them. Um, under E and F, um, these are these are standard so-called consent articles. They're all voted as a group at town meeting, right? Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. So um, I was wondering whether, and I'm not asking to change anything, but I just note that the acceptance of grants um, E section E of this article does not require that the acceptance of federal and state grants that require local matches, dollar matches, 
are subject to available appropriations for said purposes. Basically, what this is saying is that the select board um, is authorized to apply for, accept, and expend for specific purposes any monies provided by any federal and state grants or programs which may be awarded to the town. This does not take into account any local matches. So I just wanted to note, I, I wanted to note that and didn't know whether there should be a specific authorization or, or a specific um, provision that any that require local matches should be subject to available appropriations. And then F is um, the contract authority. Um, again, I, I, it doesn't note that the con all contracts are subject to available appropriations. That's generally written into the contract language. It is, but it's all it's not in the town meeting authorization. So um, if if you're satisfied, it's just a um, a note that I had when I was reviewing. And as to the question about E, the town has gone back and forth about whether to put this in. Um, but most grant matches have to go through the entire vetting process depending on what the project is. So as long as town meeting is clear that any of this is subject to available appropriation. Absolutely. That's the important thing. That's what the warrant provides. Generally, if we have to do, for instance, Margaret, last year we had an MVP grant match that we did at a special town meeting. That was a separate appropriation that went through capital finance and the select board. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. Just um, for clarification, on the C, knowledge and gifts, uh, the second section about the deer that don't have to root, I feel like we've seen that same language for many, many years. And mm -hmm. just no, I part, can't hear. Take a minute here. It's still playing on. It's five to ten year period. Yeah. Right. The root is completed in 16. So we're yep. years beyond that. We're still, we're still paying. So you're saying so, so those are the original pledges. Right. Yes. Okay. So, and and one entity has paid their pledge in full. So, do we? Want um, to sort of... I don't know. That's a good question. I thought about that. I myself. couldn't hear anything that was just said. Oh, okay. Um, I, I've thought about that several times, but haven't bothered to talk to Casey because we've been too too um, flat out doing everything else. Um, but so so he's wondering, Casey, if. The monetary pledges for the school roof that has been in there year after year after year should just come out. Or be more reflective of what was received in this year. Yeah, right? Because we're thinking. Pledges you know, in the last 12 months. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I was going to say, we don't normally get them all before June 30th, right, Brenda? Well, we usually, the only one we're missing this year is from Eagle Brook. And um, they have not given us their pledge on the school roof, but the other two that should have given us money this year have. I guess phrase another way, should we have something here that reflects what is still left to be paid as opposed to maybe an impression that this, I mean, you could look at this two ways. They haven't paid, they're way behind, or they keep paying this every year, oh, that's, which might that's... give some people in town the wrong idea. You know what? We could look at that. Casey, you want me to think about a different way to put that? Yeah. Okay. Ultimately, it's up to the board how they want to present. Yeah. It does seem weird to thank people for the stuff they have. Yeah. I like the idea of putting what they still owe us so that yeah. they know they owe us. <laughs> yeah. What, what they pledged, what we've received so far. Because there is one that I think is, is going to try not to pay us anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I said it on camera. I think that we should recognize the one who paid it in full. Yeah. Because it sort of looks like historic right. Deerfield isn't paying us anything, but that's okay because they're uh, not capable. Good point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That makes sense. Okay, I will change that. Okay. Yeah. Happy to do so. Okay. That's a good, really good point, Julie. We want to encourage people to pay full, pay early. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I also looked at the front page. I was able to like find each of those salaries 
um, elected official compensations, except for the school committee. I don't know where that is. I assume that's the right. But it's in the school budget. It's in the school budget. Yeah. And and I did confirm that that's what they're paying them this year. Um, I'm assuming that's yep. what they next year. I think Casey checked on that. Um, and this, I did check the 41071 and 104. Those are correct. Uh, what, are you, what are you looking at for the oh, the, the oh the, yes the, yes those are correct I did check those today and that includes the transportation for yes the hundred and four is the total of the oh that oh, that's article two I apologize <laughs> I'm not we're moving ahead uh, yep so do you guys <laughs> want to go ahead and vote this or do you want to wait and see the rearranged discussion of um. The, the section that David just left. I'm just I'm just going to say monetary pledge is still due for the replacement of the Deerfield Elementary School roof completed in 2016. Boom, and then these are the pledges received in the last 12 months. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, I think we I think we should acknowledge that you know they have been paying. Yeah, and and the historic Deerfield has paid off its um, donation or okay. pledge early. Okay. So that was good. Yeah. And that maybe will encourage more payment. So or and a third category paid in full historic gear to, which means that the other ones haven't paid in full. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. But just let you guys decide. Just just a little more data on that to clarify. But one other question at the bottom of the page, renovations for temporary library in-kind donation from Eagle Brook. So apparently they did work, and that's the 154. But then it says annual gift. Is huh. that there's no annual gift for renovations? So is that an annual gift that they're giving to the library, or an annual gift they're giving to the town? No, it's the money. It's the money they spent on the renovations, and instead of giving us an annual gift, they wanted to apply that amount towards their annual gift. You mean the 154? And they've given the same amount for what the last 20 years? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So does the annual gift need to be removed from that section? This is the amount outstanding? No, it's, it's just money they put into the renovations, but they wanted it noted that that portion of it was their annual gift. Yes. Instead of giving us money, they're, they're giving us the renovations. So they spent $180,269 on renovations. They would normally have given us $26,000, which would have showed up in the top section. Yeah. Monetary gifts and appreciate the right. Of right. It sounds like the paying the section on headed renovation for temporary library in kind donation and annual gift from Eagle Brook School, and then you can just say or but that makes the annual gift look like it might be or just remove annual gift altogether and put the total one eighty two sixty nine for the <laughs> renovations. Uh, what do you think, Casey? I this is no it doesn't much as I appreciate everybody's comments I think the board needs to tell me how they want to see it Looks so good. leave it I'm out. willing to listen and make changes I just want to make sure that I'm hearing it from the board as well yeah actually why don't we just how about if we say you get stipulated for renovation so I heard add to it I think the financial part is our business. Financial part is, yeah. is the wording of a foreign part of the thing. As long as people understand. Well, this part always does get brought up at town meeting every year. Someone's going to say, oh, this is what we got for an annual gift. And it's good. Now it's going to, you know, it is going to be important to somebody. Well, they, they stepped up to the plate. True. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, you could put stipulated you know, for a, a library. Simp yeah. A simple thing, maybe just on that last line, starts off renovations, but maybe it should just start off in kind renovations for temporary library from Eagle Brook School. And then I suppose the annual gift makes a little more sense that it's part of their in kind. I just, I just found it confusing as to what the annual gift <laughs> was when it says whatever. Mm -hmm. To me, a kind means non monetary. It is non monetary. So they so did how do work. They get a value. They did work. They want a value just to be able to put a value on their they do. Uh, forms. Yeah. So, so I just don't want people to think that there was $26,000 of cash. 
that was given as part of an annual gift because that probably would have been up at the top with the other schools. Um, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Starting out with the in kind <clears throat> donation. In kind of wow. Well, I mean, the annual gift is actual money, right? Would yeah. actually give us money. The so, the other part of this was they did some work, and the value of it was one hundred and fifty four thousand two hundred sixty nine. One hundred eighty thousand. So yeah, well, yeah they whatever twenty six thousand. Well, that, no. that's what I'm trying to find out. We did not. In other words, they they didn't give us that check this time as an annual gift. No, they, well, but the they, idea they, was that they originally were going to do one hundred and fifty thousand worth of work. And it turned out to be 180, and they said, okay, well, so it would normally give you 26,000 or something, 25,000 for a gift. That's why I think it's worded this way. So then I completely agree with David. I think that the, um, I, I, I think it should read in some way that the in kind donation includes the dollar, you know, the dollars that would be included in the annual gift. So it doesn't look like a separate monetary donation. So maybe say renovations considered as an annual gift. On that particular line. Mm -hmm. So the top line says monetary gifts and appreciation for services rendered. What if down here we said in kind gift and appreciation for services rendered yep. instead of annual gift? Yeah. With a total of 180? No, 26,000. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, the second be for a total 180. Yeah, no, 26,000. I mean, I don't know. So I know instead of annual gift, and then it says twenty six thousand on the right. Start that line with in kind includes annual gift. Yeah, twenty six thousand. So the others. So that works. Yep, that's clear. Is that, is that clear? Yeah. So will there be two in kinds? Yeah. One at the beginning of the first sentence, and well, one so somebody needs to tell me what they're saying because I can barely hear you, and I'm the one sitting here with it in front of me <laughs> trying to type. <laughs> I would okay. Oh, I would suggest. I don't know if this is a motion, but I would suggest we start that last category in bold: in kind renovations for temporary library donation from Eagle Brook School. And then I would suggest, in front of annual gift, we put um, in kind yep. includes annual gift. Yeah. This is the select board's warrant, so we'd have to get the select board's. Um, approval, but I would second your oh. I would second your motion as a recommendation. <laughs> okay, so in other words, you're saying you're saying we'll follow up with Casey. Yeah. So okay. in terms of the title of that section, should it be in kind, then followed by with followed by what it was before? We can follow up with you, Casey. Yeah, I I've got it, Casey. All right, thank you. I we just want to make sure that. Yeah, I want to make sure it's right. To Eagle Brook because yeah. they were really great to make this happen for the library. Mark has a comment. Why? Why? It's good. We're gonna we're gonna have to vote on this again after the games. So okay. okay, Beth, would you like to try yourself? Okay, I was driving my second. <laughs> Right. Are we on to two okay. then? Okay. Oh, wait, John, John has a question. In italics at the bottom, we're, we're acknowledging other non monetary gifts. Yep. Yet we take this one and point it out. Well, it was larger than you know anything else for the year. It was unique. It was unique, yeah. Okay. It's also one of a kind, John. It's not we, that we can count on $180,000 every year, right? Of work. Of work, right. I don't know. I'm just, will the others be upset that, yeah, it's a question. Will the others be upset that Eagle Brook cuts some publicity? Well, actually, I mean, we, this was something that Deerfield Academy pledged to do for like three years, and then it yeah, didn't they, happen, and then Eagle Brook said, hey, we can do this because DA has got a lot on their plate. So it's just happened this way. I'm just curious, how does this number get derived? Did they actually hire contractors to yeah. do it who told yeah. them how much they would bill, or did they actually hire contractors who then billed Eagle Brook who paid the yeah. contractors? Yeah. So it wasn't the Eagle Brook staff coming down and doing it. No. It was an actual 
you know, then why are we saying it's in kind? And they actually gave cash, you're saying? No, no, no. They, they, they actually controlled the job. They hired the general contractor. They hired the subcontractor. That's important. The subcontractors build the school and the general right. contractor build the school and they paid all the bills without our involvement. Right. All I'm suggesting is that to me, that's a more generous sounding gift than what I originally thought by reading this, which is that Eagle Brook said, hey guys, you know, ground staff, contractors yeah. on staff, get down there right. and, and work on this sure. for, yeah. for the time. No, they hired somebody. But you're saying they actually wrote a check to some B.A. Yeah. Sullivan and Sons who did the work. Correct. Okay. Yeah. The, in fact, it so was just really Sullivan. unclear. Yeah. But, sorry? It was D.A. Sullivan that yeah. they contracted with. Right. Right. Okay. Well, now it's even more not directly saying what happened to me. To me, they made a direct payment. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's not in library. That's not in kind anymore. Really, to me, in kind is them doing what? You know what? Yeah. It's their thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're at least clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. They have. All right. Uh, I'd like to recommend uh, I'll, I'll, I'll second it. All right. So those dollar values are one of the dollar values that we discuss. Was Margaret the second in the first one? I don't, oh, I don't, I don't think that. No, it wasn't no, me. Was me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Any discussion? Just again, on so the 104 to the out of district placement is um, up to and or we we think that's going to happen but frankly certain students may not go there. Right. that's correct just like okay. anything else just all like anything else. are estimated okay yep okay we we do we yep. do follow up david to make sure that the student is going there for the program that is not offered by franklin sure. tech of course yeah we, we make yep. sure that yeah that happens because some people have switched and it was like, well, I'm sorry, we're not going to pay. And I, you know, quite frankly, uh, Casey reached out to them and they gave us the whole rundown of their process. This the students have a chance until October to make a decision to go to Smith Folk if there's room in the program. Yeah. So, so this truly is an estimate based on the best information we've got at the moment. And you've gotten the uh, dollar values now for per student cost. Yeah. Yeah. And this covers. Basically. Yeah, it should. I, you know, but the, the one thing they never tell you is what does it cost for the sped uh, part of it. And so that's, that's always an unknown until you get the bill. Any other discussion? Questions? All those in favor? That's your name. Article three. Is a motion? I'd like to make a motion to recommend Article 3 address. Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Just want to clarify in my mind that's revenue. We're authorizing the spending of revenue that goes into a revolving fund, right? Correct. So if we get 20000 in recycling money, we can spend it. Right. Okay. It takes special authorization after this vote to um, expend any more than what's authorized here. So, correct. Yeah. Do we have the amount from the prior year? Is it the same? Yeah. Um, yeah, it hasn't changed for several years. Any other questions? Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous seven zero zero. Article four. 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 Article four.
assuming that um, the AG will take the the full 90 days uh, for approval after town meetings vote and dissolution of town meeting, um, how ready is the town with the rules, regs, and policy manual to implement it so there's no gap between former personnel bylaws and implementing new personnel policies? So Are that's a very good question. <laughs> I've been talking to personnel about this for several months, Margaret. Yeah. Um, what we did was we utilized a grant from Community Compact to get an overview, like have somebody evaluate our current policies in the bylaws and any policies we had created outside of the bylaws and gave us a recommendation of policies that we need to implement. I have a stack of them ready to go. Um, we can't really start until after town meeting makes a decision, but to your point about the AG taking the full 90 days, I actually think they will, but we have a place to start. So benefits have their, will have their own section, all, and there's actually a list of policies that we need to implement or change. So I guess I guess my my question specifically is it, upon the AG's approval, the town needs to be able to implement the new policies immediately. Correct. Is three is three months from town meeting going to be enough for the personnel committee and the select board to take all the actions necessary to get that done? I think so. They understand that they have a time frame here. Okay, and that we have to have these structures in place. And I've already started working on it. Okay. Otherwise, there's a gap and you risk not having any any governing personnel policies, bylaw or personnel policies in place, and that wouldn't be a good place to be. So I just wanted to make sure that that's enough time for you to get everything done and be ready to roll once the AG approves. We've been planning for that, Margaret. Just a follow-up. Just to continue on on that thought process, um, there's three people on the board right now. One of them's a finance committee person. The other two are sort of, I don't know who they're Select nominated. board appointees. Select board, is that who they're nominated by? So yep. then we have this three-month thing, and it finally gets approved. Then the employees are going to have to vote for their employee rep. Are the bylaw employees. Ask the bylaws. The bylaw employees would I vote mean, to elect if it was passed. I, I said the wrong word. The, the the personnel manual. Like, how's that process going to work? So, we have to. If it's passed, we can anticipate that this will happen until we get the AG's notification that they've approved it. We can warn people, but we we don't know until the AG has approved. The bylaw employees, if it passes the way it passed, the way it's written, um, they would take a take their. They need to take a moment to be able to do that, um, do the, do an election for that, and then join the personnel committee um, to begin working with them. But if you read through here, there's still questions related to the composition, and some of the questions that indicated changes that you see right now came from personnel reviewing this last week. I, I do like the way the, um, I do like the way section A has been redlined to um, improve clarity of the appointing authorities. Yep. Uh, certain members, that's, that's much better than it showed before. Well, we had comments, I had received comments from Julie. I had my own thoughts on it. And I give personnel board a lot of credit. They sort of tore this section apart. And I took that to council the next day and she made some changes. Um, and then once I pulled this back into a warrant, um, our lead counsel, lead general counsel reviewed it again. So there's some, she made some tweaks in it. The comments that were there are still there, but we also have comments from labor counsel, Jane Friedman on on some of the things she thinks we need to pay attention to theoretically this could change before town meeting we could have something that ends up 
slightly different and it may just be in this composition section. Um, personnel board, my feeling, and you can certainly ask David Sharp, he was, he was working with everybody that day we were discussing it. Um, my feeling was is they had a lot of questions about this, um, but the main framework here to, to your point earlier is to create the ability to have a personnel manual because in order for us to be legally compliant, we have to make a change like this. We aren't legally compliant with many of the policies that exist on a state and federal level. Um, well, I guess I'm just curious, where exactly does it say that we, until we adopt the certain policies, where does it say that we don't just continue with the ones, whatever they are, that are on the books? Like, Margaret, why are we saying that we're going to be in a void? I mean, I understand. Well, it's supposed to take effect July 1st. It's in the beginning of the article. It's in the question. No, it's no, become I, effective I on. Process within this bylaw is a process for us to come up with the personnel. Ado guide. It's in section 35-7. Adoption of personnel rules and regulations. So right now, all the personnel rules are in the bylaw that exists. So when this bylaw gets approved, that bylaw goes away. And yes. You have nothing, no yeah. rules. Right. Because the old rules were replaced by this, and this has no rules in it. Yeah, that was my only concern, a gap between the two. Right, right. Um, so the personnel but, board could but, just take the old bylaws, put them in a manual, put manual on the front, and approve that. Have that in place until you get the new manual or something. But I guess what I'm saying is the you're saying all those things are in the bylaw, but the bylaw doesn't contain the manual. Which is the problem. Yeah, it's a problem. Well, it'd be a problem if the manual is not ready to be implemented on the AG's approval. Do we currently have no manual at all? No manual exactly. at all. Everything's in a bylaw, and that's why it's so arcane to do anything. So really? the idea is to kind of strip everything out of a bylaw, get a manual together. So over the next Collectively, couple, all of our summers are ruined? Is that what I was yeah, saying? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and it, can you... Can you approve um, sections of a of a manual? So, like, do you have to wait until every section is done to like? If you have nine of the ten things that are going to be in the manual all done, except you can't agree about the personnel appointing authority. Well, there there are going to be some important things to have in place. For for example, the, the grievance procedure. I mean, there are, right. there are going to be a number of things that are going to be important to be Absolutely. ready to roll with. Right. I don't think the manual has to be complete right. in its entirety. In fact. Um, the table that. that was included in the thing from the Collins Center, there the town already has zero policies on many things. Correct. So, I mean, if that hasn't caused harm, that's fine. But if you, if there are if there are certain provisions that are in the current bylaw that are being eliminated, and you don't have something to replace them, um, I think it's I, I think it's important to um, to not risk having a gap. In, so in right now, the the framework. I've given personnel in the past few months is we take all the benefits and the policies that currently exist in the bylaw, slap them into the manual and start there. We, as you know, Margaret, the Collins Center review indicates several things that we don't have. Those are policies we can incorporate. The main pieces that I think you're concerned, and I may be hearing this wrong, Margaret, but I think your concern is not having certain things available like the benefits. You know, our FMLA, we actually don't have an FMLA policy. We just reference the federal law. Um, so this is what I mean. Yeah. It's so you're absolutely right. Anything in the cur that's covered in the current bylaw, like right. we pull and that and right out and make that. Change. That's what I mean. This isn't like that. that's exactly what we should do is take what we have, use that for now, and then we can take time to make changes. But certain certain things, I have some drafted policies. <laughs> So those can be incorporated much more quickly. And there's standardized policy, you know this almost better than I do. There's standardized policies we can get from any number of our peers that can fit and be tweaked. Mm -hmm. It's gotta be ready to roll with them. Exactly, I'm not unaware of that. I'm, I, I, let, let me be clear, I'm not unaware of that. <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. 
May I make a motion to call the question? I know. We have a second. Second. We are I voting have... only on to call the question. Everybody in favor of calling the question? All those opposed? So that doesn't pass, so we can keep talking about it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh, I should, that was three. I, I, I'm abstaining. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I that. So my concern. So that's three. I, I, I didn't count. I only got six. What did you vote? Did you vote three? yes or no? No. You voted no. Okay, so three, four, zero. Okay. All right. Uh, I probably should preface this, but I, I, I don't think we're any worse off. I think that we should just vote this and continue to make changes. Casey's suggestion was perfect. We could just take the existing bylaw, put it in as the current law, because that's, that's, that's all we have right now, and, you know, continue to refine this. But I don't think we're any worse off um, by moving forward. And for the point of this is all personal work. Except yeah. for the financial implications that we would have interest in. Yes, but what we're doing is micromanaging the personnel work. It's true. Are we? <laughs> I, I think it's important that there are financial implications that that the personnel board have policies in place. But yeah, I, yeah, the details of I how think they, they get in place is their problem. I think right. they're aware of that. I think you're just yeah, there's, you're cracking a whip um, essentially mm -hmm. to the personnel board and the select board to point out that we need to get yes. cracking on this ninety days after town meeting. Or before that, the town. yeah, right away, yeah. And then have it ready to go when they say yes. Yes. We bless you. You could go ahead and vote it. Exactly. Have a pending their approval. Yep. Yep. Yeah, no big uh, any other like within the the description of the like, the bylaw, the proposed bylaw, are there any other points? So there's a I do have a question. First of all, board has a vote of this, have they? Or have they? I, I um, don't know if she can hear you because you're yeah, not I think we um, there was some changes that you were making after our last meeting. Yes, what you see here is those changes, right? Uh, because you had discussed a five going, making sure it stayed at a five member board. Um, the discussion about the elected member from the bylaw employees that was conveyed to town council, and you'll see there's comments in here about that. Um, to, I think is a question I'm, I think I'm hearing Julie ask, um, personnel has to have a hearing on both the compensation plan and this proposed change. They have it on the 23rd. Unfortunately, that's the only time that they can meet before town meeting to address their recommendation on this. So it won't carry in the warrant. It will carry in the guide. Perfect. Any other discussions on this? Go ahead. I would like to observe that subsection E under um, section 35.7 does give the select board the authority to act if prompt action is in the best interest and if the personnel board has can't act, which I think would cover the uh, issue that we keep that we've been discussing about you know that the personnel board has not properly prepared. By the time this goes into effect, the select board could just say whatever they want. <laughs> but there's another lap for it to fall into. <laughs> Three laps. Casey, there's something. Go ahead, Casey. Go ahead, Casey. To be fair, one of the things that came up in my conversation with Labor Council was. There are times that the select board as the CEOs has to act. Um, one of the responsibilities of the CEOs is to protect, you know, safety and welfare of their, not only their employees, but the residents. And the perfect example of having to act was when we had to deal with COVID. Um, I don't really think the board is going to act without having conversations with personnel board, but I hear what you're saying. Um, in some ways, I think changes in the composition might mitigate some of those questions, but frankly, there are times the select board just has to act. Okay. 
further discussion. So um, just a question to the group, are we okay with approving it as it is, voting it as it is, or do we wanna vote it pending approval by the planning board or something like that, or do we just, I'm actually talking myself out of this. We can approve it, planning board doesn't approve it. Then, personnel, um, personnel board, sorry. One of those two people. Um, <laughs> can we hold? Otherwise we vote it the, the afternoon of town meeting. Yeah. You could certainly do that. You mentioned there might be a few other changes, correct? Especially in that. If I, you know, I can't say for sure, Margaret, but there could be, I mean, it's a general bylaw. There could be changes all the way up to town meeting. I've seen it happen before. Um, I would hope not, but honestly, I can't say it's going to be discussion amongst the personnel board and potentially the select board. If they have changes that they want me to include and I give to personnel board for next week, then that's also a valid consideration. That's why you see so many comments around changes in this in this section of the warrant. Casey, do you know the time of that hearing? I want to say it's 6.15, but don't quote me. Okay, thank you. I'll check. Yeah. Okay, just curious on those. Six. 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 Okay. Does anybody have a motion to table this? I'm not suggesting that we do that, but I'm like, I don't think we're. It does seem like it might be good just to vote it after we know what it says. We okay. can do it on town meeting. Do you want to withdraw your motion or do you want to table it? I agree. I moved it, so I will withdraw it. All right. I think I second it. No, no John did. You did this. Time. All right. <laughs> two for two, two for four, or something. All right. Article five. So Article five has not been public hearing. Or did the personnel board vote on the class comp plan? No, they're holding the hearings the same day. The class comps at six o'clock. The um bylaw change potential bylaw change is at 6 15. um so holding it all at once um casey i'm sorry but didn't we vote this a while ago am i missing something when we when we did the two percent isn't that the same thing you, just you did but you hadn't held held the hearing we waited to go through the budget process in case anything changed um, however, you the current bylaw requires it. In fact, that's one of the reasons there's changes in this proposed bylaw to give us some relief from that, because it requires a four hundred dollar notice just just to approve a class comp for town meeting. Okay, but just I'm sorry to answer, so to answer the question. Maybe you, you did approve it in December, but you didn't. I specifically did not ask you to hold the hearing until now because I did not know what the budget season was going to look like. Okay. So in my opinion, I'd like to see us go ahead and vote this tonight so that it shows in the warrant approved by or whatever recommended by finance committee. And then we can like our vote tonight could be we recommend it, you know, as something like assuming it doesn't change or you know, pending recommendation by the mm -hmm. personnel committee. And what we've done in the past is if they go ahead and recommend it, that piece of it comes out and doesn't get printed if you want. I will recommend this article as worded subject to personnel committee approval. You have a second. I'll second. Any discussion? Four. All those in favor? Uh, opposed? Please. Abstaining. Sorry, that was seven zero zero. Beautiful. Gotcha. Article six. Can we go uh, back one second on this? Yep. It is two and a half percent, right? Two. 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 It's two. I think um, it's two and a half percent from step to step. Right. That's been in place all along. This is a two percent increase from last year's. So if you look at the dollar value in each box last okay. year, this is 2% more. Casey? Yes. It's, it's next week's personnel committee meeting 
the public hearing on this? Yes, no? for both of them. Okay. And should, should we in future years do that earlier? You know what? We had to do it twice last year. Last year we did? Because it changed. Yeah. That's why I waited. I know when it needs to happen. Um, okay. It had happened where we did the hearing and then things changed in the budget process and a request went back to personnel to make a, a change to what the cost of living adjustment was there for the overall classification compensation. That was the reason I asked you to wait. Okay, okay let's move on. Article six. Um, Brenda, is there going to be a summer money? Uh, so nice. Yes. Um, most likely it's going to be around 20 to 25,000, but I, I can't, I mean, that's it. I haven't seen any bills from the last two storms. So with that said, um, I'm, I'm taking a wild guess, but for town meeting, I think that if we were to appropriate 20,000 towards it at town meeting, we can cover the rest of it with the reserve fund transfer if we need to. Um, just don't know what that number is going to be yet. So that's going to be from free cash? No, it's going to be from the uh, Smith Volk appropriation from oh. FY24 because we had only one student and I think we were planning on four or five. Okay. So let me ask you a question, Brenda. If we want to change that from a sum of money to, say, 25000 I think the recommendation from council is going to be to identify the funding source. If, you know, there are times that she tells us not to identify funding sources, but in this case, um, I, I, I'm throwing it out there. You and I have talked about it. Right. But if you want me to change the sum of money, I could certainly add that particular item, including on top of available funds, it's just because then you you sort of pull that out for people to look at. Sounds great. Do you want, is it 20 or 25? Oh, let me talk to Diane in the morning and see what she has for bills. Okay. It's pretty low, no matter what it is. I mean, compared to years oh, past. Oh yeah, definitely. Right. Who are we voting on that? So we we don't have a motion. It sounds like we shouldn't be. Oh, moving on. Article seven. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to recommend Article seven as written. Second. Great discussion. Brenda, any comments? Uh, well, you can see it's three different um, sets of bills. Uh, the first one is uh, a number of bills for um, laboratory testing services for the old Deerfield wastewater treatment plant facility that uh, apparently never got to us uh, for fiscal year 23. And so that amount there, the 1726.84 would be coming from Stewart Enterprise uh, retained earnings. The next section is having to do with uh, the Fair Labor Standards Act in regards to overtime, um, uh, a miscalculation from previous years that we've now corrected by going two years back. And that amount is $397.20 to come from SCAM's retained earnings. And then the last one uh, was, was a publication cost from last year that we had requested um, payment from another company and they have refused to pay it. So we are, are um, on the hook for it for $376.64. And that would come from free cash. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous 700. Article 8. Make a motion to Article 8 is written. Second. Um, 
you want to, does anybody have any questions on this? We've got that. Yep. All those in favor? That's unanimous, 700. Article 9. Yeah. Uh, Don't say it too quickly. Article 9 is. That's the, the uh, young all right. We, spent so we have a motion. <laughs> line by line. Make a motion to recommend Article 9 is written. Second. Uh, do we want to recommend it up to... Yeah, forget it. Any discussion? Uh, just a question. Um, it, it, it indicates such amounts are designated under requests in the omnibus budget, as shown in the report of the Finance Committee. Yes. Is, that's what it always shows instead of recommendations, right? Uh, because you know I don't remember. When you, look, um, you know, when it's all broken down, it's recommended findings. There's both on this page, there's requests and recommended. Yeah, I, it's a separate report. And I, you know what? I was going to, I actually was going to print that for you tonight and I didn't do it. Um, the date well, yeah. Casey, what have we done from year to year? Trevor's, Trevor's recommended. FY, there were three columns. F, this is from FY24. FY24 requested, and the right hand column is FY24 recommended. Okay. But in the body of it, what's it say? Here. Recommend. Yes. I think this is the shoes. Do you guys want to wait to vote this until we see the table and make sure we agree? I yeah, actually I'll would kind of like to do that. Okay. You withdraw the motion. Yep. Um, any, everybody's good with that? Okay, Article 10. Make a motion to recommend Article 10 is written. Second. Any discussion? Um, the, our budget sheet, the sewer enterprise fund has revenue. Uh, oh, never mind. I got it. Okay. Between <laughs> Adams and the other. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just took 5000 out of it as an investment. Number. Number. Right. Yeah, the previous version. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous 700. Article 11. Make a motion to approve Article 11 is written. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? This is the number we just talked about, 444, 368. Yeah. All those in favor? All those? I'm staying. I'm to read it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't. You ready? Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous 700. Article 12. Make a motion to recommend Article 12 is written. We have a second. Second. And this 105000 all comes out of the SCEMS budget that we voted? No. So, um, so the station, oh, I did retain yep, the station okay. alert system is going to come from, from we, what was currently, uh, what's, what is currently a capital appropriation in the general fund for 30000 and and the revenue source or the funding source for that was out of the rent stabilization fund at one point in time. And then the intercept vehicle is 
estimated to be $60,000. $44,000 of that is coming from the current appropriation for the monitors, the cardiac monitors, because of the federal grant we got to pay for one of those. And the remaining $16,000 will come from retained earnings. And then the last item is for the EV charger, and that's considered um, a part of the building. So that will come from this from the rent stabilization fund as well. So those are all considered FY24 expenditures. Um, there is one last capital item for SCIMS, and that will come from the rest of the retained earnings, and that will be in the table that will go in the next article when, when uh, that is complete, which is the list that you have or the spreadsheet that Casey gave out earlier. I hadn't put that table in because the board still needs to talk about it. Uh, Mark's going to sit with them tomorrow. Um, we did some, Brenda and I did some work on that today. Um, this allows the but, use but of retained okay. earnings but covers off, three things. about that for a sec and um, go um, finish up Article 12 first. I, I have a question. Yeah. So this doesn't have to get split between the three towns because? Because it's some of it is coming from the rent stabilization fund, which the other towns. Yeah, we hold own. that. I mean, that's that's ours. Mm -hmm. um, seventy five percent of the lease payments that they pay the town of Deerfield go into the rent stabilization mm -hmm. fund, so it'll come out of that. And then the rest of it is um, coming either out of retained earnings or out of um, the previous capital already been split up. So therefore, yes. it doesn't have to be voted by the other towns because it's all right here. Gotcha. Makes sense. Sorry, I was saying sense. There's Any other questions? Oh, you just wording that stuff. There's still. Yeah, I mean, you were saying these are technically 2024 expenditures. Yeah, I, you know, uh, yeah. Definitely. So they have nothing to do with the 2025 capital skins capital. Right. Well, no, it, it's it's so the intercept vehicle needs to be purchased now so that we can have it in right. eight months or whatever. And um, there's a way the station work. alert system, you know, we already have 30,000 appropriation and, and that's something that needs to be instituted fairly quickly. So might as well just reallocate. And then the charger, maybe that could have waited till FY25, but it's in here and it's fine. Yeah. What's that? These are not 2025 skins capital expenditure. Well, it's the skins capital. How does, this is 2025, right? Did you hand it out? Yes. I did, yeah, it's it's showing as FY25, but it's, you're right, some of it is FY24. Some of it. I did that really quickly this afternoon. Um, just to get something in your books. <laughs> Anybody have questions on Article 12 or on how this relates to it? No, no further discussion. All those in favor? Aren't you unanimous? 700. Article 13, we don't have the table. Um, let's talk about the table for a minute before we do a motion in case we decide we want. There was a handout with the table. There you go. Yeah, and um, this is one of the items that we hadn't voted yet for the amount of free cash that was going towards capital. Okay. So let's, everybody has this color-coded sheet. Let's work from that color for the This one. Bless you. It was it was on the table. Uh, oh. Okay. Okay. 
So if we look at this color-coded table, my understanding is if you work down at the third line down is highlighted in blue, that's gonna come from a grant. Grants don't Did require town that? meeting. So vote, so there's, we're gonna remove that. Your plan is to remove that from the table. Yeah, so the, so the Bloody Brook culvert replacement, um, it's coming. It's coming from an MVP grant, which the town does not vote on. Right. Right. Okay. I think the MVP core group has to address it, but it went through the entire capital process of approval. Capital approved it, but I don't think it requires a vote by town meeting. The grant is ex right. exists because uh, what happens is a 2.0 pro uh, process allows us to have. I think it's thirty-two thousand we have left. In that process, I have no idea. Oh, well, I, that's yeah, a question uh, for Chris. Money and you know, set aside. Money has been set aside to do a seed project, and this, depending on our MVP vote to recommend to the select board, um, you know, this was where we were thinking the twenty-five thousand was going to come out of that thirty-two that we already have cash in hand. Um, so it's it, part of the it's part of the two point oh. It's that, part of the and that was a total ninety thousand dollar grant, and right. they gave us forty five thousand up front. Right. Okay. And I believe there's thirty two thousand left after we pay, you know, Wayne and Chris Curtis. Oh, I see. Right. And and we finished the process. We we're going to have like thirty two thousand left for a seed project, and we believe that we're going to be recommending the seed project B. The uh, replacement of the culvert, right? So it doesn't require town meeting vote. Okay. And it, so it doesn't require a town meeting vote. It just, it's a recommendation to the select board. I mean, Tim and I are both on the MVP committee. So what we're doing is bringing it to the select board to do a formal vote. Well, I will vote it down. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> We got too much water downtown and we're trying to move it out. And yeah. so, all right, let's move on. Yeah. Um, so stormwater asset management grant match, that one also. That's it's an existing, existing special fund. fund. Yep. Okay. So that won't be in the warrant. When we Correct. See it. Nope. Right. Yeah. The next one down, the two yellow ones that are crossed off. <clears throat> Those are actually coming from the FY24 wastewater treatment plant budget. So they, even though they were big enough projects that capital needed to approve, um, they're being spent out of the operations. Okay. I thought the 20,000 was not happening at all. Is that right? I have no idea. Right, Casey? What? Casey, that 20,000 just isn't happening, right? That was looking at piping down to the old Water no, it is happening. Huh? It is happening. Mm. It has to. Otherwise, they don't get water to the system, Trevor. So is that a change? Because we were going to hold off on that. They don't. If they fix the piping, they won't have water unless they fix this piping. No. Nah. All right. I'm going to regroup on that. Unless I'm missing something completely. We we're holding off on that. But. All right, I'll follow up. Yeah, it's yeah. I think it was crossed out because it was going to be in the FY twenty four budget. Okay, but I thought we were holding off on that. But anyways, I'll follow up on that. Okay, this is part I, of the I know five hundred thousand that they're doing for the new piping, right? No, that was uh, that was other engineering we were doing already for for that. The five hundred thousand the GA is paying for. Okay, I right. just well, keep keep Kevin that. in the loop because I yeah. I think he's set to purchase things if he needs to. I yeah, think I'm also going to reach out. Kevin to had him. submitted this months ago, Trevor. I think it's already happening because it was all supposed to be on hold until we did the project down there. But, okay. Okay, I'll follow with Kevin. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. I was going to be all Yeah. Until the plant was done. Okay. <laughs> Unless right. something changed and we had to do something, and that I could have missed it. But all right, I was under the impression so, it was happening. No, Julie, yeah, as long as you're running, table, we're good. The <laughs> stuff that's being crossed off, like or, that, we're not considering. Are we when we vote? Are we voting like, like so? For example, if we don't know whether this is happening or not, does that matter when we're voting? 
No, because we were, I think it, we were talking about it being as part of the 24 budget, not the 25 budget. Already had money. We already had money set aside for it. So this does not change the items that still appear on the capital plan for FY25. Right. So regardless not, of whether right. or not we're doing this, it's not going to matter for the warrant. Okay. Yeah. Right. Good. Great. All right. Wait a minute. Um, so we're on the green one. So the green one is zero. So it seems like it doesn't need to be in there. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. So if we look at just the free cash column, we've discussed these before. We've got 72,000 for air conditioning in the elementary school, 17,000 for server replacement here, and 12,500 as um, part of a match for a grant for a senior center van, um, the Deerfield portion of that. Um, so why don't we just, so we have it documented, go ahead and um, have a motion on that 101500 from free cash. I'll make that motion. We have a second. I'll second the discussion. Okay. Any discussion on just the free cash dollar value? So we're not voting the article. We're just voting that this is how much we want to take from free cash for capital. Yeah, um, these, these are all the same items that you looked at the last month um, that we had agreed that would be coming out of free cash. It's just you're taking a formal vote now. It's like CIPC okay with it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any discussion? No, all those in favor? That's unanimous, seven zero zero. Um, so I see two other items that you need to recommend on this okay. list, and that would be the uh, sewer uh, wastewater treatment plant truck that's a replacement so they can do their own snow removal and the replacement stretchers. You've covered all the rest of the items in Article 12. Okay. So uh, that sewer truck, we've already approved the scam, not scams, wastewater treatment plant budget, and this is included in that Right budget discussion, right? So the the truck is coming from retained earnings. So this is a separate item. This will be in the capital article, okay. article 13. Correct. All right. Anybody like to make a motion for that 42,600 for the truck? I move that we recommend 42,000. I recommend that we move 42,000 for a sewer department truck. 42,600. 42,600 from retained earnings for the sewer department truck. We have a second. Back. Beautiful. Any discussion? Is it just for snow removal? No, they're gonna turn in the other truck. It, they'll use it for everything else. It, they'll use it for everything else and they'll turn in the other truck. It'll be used for transferring people back and forth between the two uh, wastewater treatment facilities and also snow removal. The chemicals and stuff like that that they have to maybe, drive. Maybe we should change the description on here. Well, John, remember we approved um, a truck last year, and they bought a new truck, or the year before they bought a new truck. Yeah, last year. But I mean, it's not it's oh. not um, adequate to um, do snow removal, so they were going to turn it in and buy a truck that they could do snow removal and. Yeah, so they got an F one fifty. It's not a big enough truck to do snow yeah. removal. They got a great trade in price on it. So the total cost of the F-350 after the trade in is $42,000 that they're going to pay out of enterprise fund money. Yeah. It's very disappointing that they just bought the truck last year and that yep. they're changing their mind this year. Yeah. They, yeah. they personally yeah, not happy with that. Well, well, good good thing it. that used vehicles have retained their value well. Yeah. Especially truck. Yeah. I'm with you, though. Yeah. No. I don't know. Does anybody know what an F 350 costs when you buy it new? Probably three times this month. Yeah, it's <laughs> not close to that. It's at least 80, and that's before any special yeah. cabs and stuff. Whatever. Any discussion? Anybody? Yeah, I guess it, because this question may be asked at an information session or a town meeting. Um, what was the cost of the truck last year, and what's the trade in for it? Oh, wow, I want to say we allocated thirty-two thousand to it. 
think that's right. And I think they're getting 28. Okay. Is that right? Okay. I, yeah. I can't remember for sure. Okay. It, it, it really wasn't, it was, the training was very good. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, just improved my, my <laughs> It's very <laughs> growing. It, it's, it's worth, it's worth, yeah. it's worth stating that. Yeah. We can, we can get the exact numbers, but yeah, Kevin, Kevin Did will be able to get that. you we made money on the training? No, <laughs> no, no, I think we lost about, it. We, we had a $4,000 expense for using it for a year. So we rented a truck yeah, for a year. That's, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's good. Trade in value is $28,375. Oh, well, I was close. Yes. <laughs> wow, that's great. I, I, I did a quick look up, Googled it, and it's like 52000 for that three fifty for three fifty. Well, maybe it's with a plow. With a plow. Wow. It all depends. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess. yeah. That's right. Right. Yes. Yeah. So it's a double double wing plow. And... Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Imagine how much time they've working. It, um, it will save it's some overtime good. for the you know highway crew plowing. All right. All those in favor. Uh, it passes seven zero zero, and what else do we need to vote? <clears throat> the stretchers, stretch. Where are the stretchers? And, and the alarm, oh, there they are thirty five five, and that will take up the rest of the retained earnings. Um, as you remember, we're we're spending eighty thousand in retained earnings for the budget, and then thirty five five. For the stretcher and sixteen thousand for the vehicle, I believe that takes us to like uh, I don't know one hundred and thirty-two thousand, maybe or one hundred and thirty-one five, and we had one hundred and thirty-three thousand four hundred in retained earnings. Three hundred ninety-seven of it will be spent for the overtime um, payout that was in Article Three, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have a motion for 35.5 for a replacement stretcher? I move that we authorize 35,500 from SKIM's retained earnings for a new stretcher. Second. Any discussion? Is that just a single stretcher? It's a single or is it? Yes, it's a oh, single okay. one. I'm pretty sure it's there, a Yeah, okay. The They're price? very expensive. Okay, so it was one that one that they needed to replace out of. Okay, yeah. any discussion? All those in favor? That passes seven zero zero. Okay, so Article thirteen will wait to vote until. Um, I don't think you've voted the alert system. You just have to vote the alert system too. Um. I don't know that we that have was, to do that. That was that was voted as part of twelve. Oh, that's in twelve. Okay. Yeah. All right. The rest of this is in twelve. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's in twelve. Yeah. Fairly. Everything else. Okay. Is no, that's fine. Okay. So we're not going to vote thirteen, but we've already voted everything. It's in thirteen, so when we see it, we can vote it. Article fourteen. You have a motion? I'll Are make a motion to approve Article 14 as written. Um, so we can discuss it. Yeah, I uh, we have a, a new table. Um, Casey, you didn't get a chance to put that in there. Um, I'm going to talk to Kathy tomorrow, but I understand that we have probably no CPA projects for this year. That is so correct. it's a flat. Forty-six thousand to open reserve or open space. Forty-six thousand to historic reserve. Forty-six thousand mm -hmm. to community housing. Probably twenty-three thousand to operating expenses because that's the max you can put to operating expenses. And then that leaves two hundred ninety-nine thousand that'll go into a budgeted reserve that can be spent before uh, the before the tax rate is set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't Let's to clarify you. that um, I believe the CPC voted to approve considering an FY25 or project 
at the fall town special town meeting because it's not not ready so i don't know if so so that will just that will leave these this um as it is right so when the fall town meeting comes and they have a project for the fall town meeting you would allocate money out of the budgeted reserve out of right. the un, undesignated fund balance and wherever else that, right yeah. and anything that was in the specific outline item like if it's historic restoration or preservation right whatever's in there could also be used okay thank you so are we waiting for a table or is this the information is this all the information that we need for folks um I'll put the ta I'll update the table. Yeah, was, she uh, sent me the motions, but I didn't I didn't have the motions in time to put them in the table, Brenda. Okay, got it. So it's the way I just read it. Hold on. No, I I put those in the table that's in the S drive. Remember? I couldn't find it. Honest to God, I was looking. <laughs> really? No, I have it. I think I have it. Okay. Okay. I'll show it to you. My motion. All right. Because I said it, Article That's 14 fine. as written. Okay. Okay. And we're it. not going to vote that, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. We will skip this one. Article 15. Oh, I move to accept or to recommend this article as written. <laughs> Cash flow, baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Discussion? Because we the people in that office all set to deal with it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It okay. feels like it's going to be a lot more work. Is it I don't think it'll be a whole lot more work because um, you're going to be sending out two two tax bills in one envelope. Um, there's just the the first two are going to be preliminary, right? That's yes. Stand it. Um, Sarah has done some research on it, and she's all on board. Okay. Yeah. The first year is probably going to be a yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be uh, um, it'll be a learning experience. experience. Yeah. For everybody. For everybody. Yeah. 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 Okay. Other discussion. Um, all those in favor? Opposed. Passes six one zero. No. Um, Who abstained? Nobody yeah. abstained. Mark left. Yeah, he's not here. Yeah. Uh, five one zero. No. Who opposed? I opposed it. Okay. Only because I think it's going to be a lot more work for her, but I'm I'm not like I don't care that much, so <laughs> I'm like it's fine. I'd have to think about it harder if anybody else was discussing it. Um. Article 6. I move that we hold on voting this um, so we have time to read the information. Mm -hmm. okay. Second. Very Basically, so, disentangling the Tilton Fund from the Tilton Library Board um, and <laughs> trying to nail down how many members each board is supposed to have. We did get the summary tonight. Yeah, that's. Okay, okay. He can give you the summary. And okay. This has been back and forth between the town attorney and the library for ten a year now. Really have any financial impact? Just wait, taking care of it. As far as I know, it does not have any impact. Is it so? I actually wrote down oh, sorry. terminology for that. Okay. Fine. I don't think that has any financial impact, but it certainly has operational impact because we keep trying to straighten this out. <laughs> It'll reduce our legal bills. Yeah. Here's a possible, it's probably not big enough. I, I think the impact is we don't want to pay any lawyers any more money. <laughs> Just this vote. <laughs> So if we decide there's no financial impact, there's possible wording for dealing with that. Um, 
Does anybody think there's financial impact on this? I haven't read it yet. Oh, okay. But then again, All right. I'd defer to others that to have read it. Yeah, I, I did read it when it came out uh, a few weeks ago. And all of those lawyer commas are in there, despite my best efforts. <laughs> I hate legal grammar. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Commas don't mean what you think they do. Julie had asked if Fincom could see a copy of the letter when deliberating the article. Is this is a memo? Regarding... So she emailed us. Is it, this is the letter, right? The memo. Yeah. Do we add the letter as explanation to the warrant? That was exactly how it was conveyed to the select board. So we'll only discuss it tonight if somebody makes a motion. If nobody wants to make a motion, nobody wants to make a motion. We will talk about this next time we meet. Also, I don't know. Uh, there might be. Um, no, we have no deadline. We're going to get through everything by by gosh. I figured on eight or eight or Next month, no, we have no additional meetings scheduled, so we'll have to come up with a time. Because oh, yeah. next Monday's Passover, we decided we didn't want to meet in Passover. We're powering through this. Let's keep going. Again. All right, Article 17. We have a motion. I will move to recommend Article 17 as written. We have a second. second. Right. Any discussion? So this, this, in effect, adds a member who is an advocate for affordable housing or community housing, correct? That's all it does. Okay. And takes out the regional housing, okay. housing okay. authority, which so, we couldn't come up with. Right? Okay. So, Okay, so it's pretty strict. It's done. We can talk about that. Is there likely to be any financial impact from this at all? Um, I have to play dumb. What does the Community Preservation Committee do? It decides on all of the projects that are are being done with our community preservation funds. The CPA. Yeah. The open space, Act. the historic and the community. Oh, housing. okay. Yep. The stuff in Article 14 is governed by the Yeah. It, uh... We're just, um, what we're trying to do, there's a housing authority um, position, but we don't have, we only have a regional housing authority. So what we're placing, replacing that is with someone who has interest in housing so that they can, we don't have quorum issues for the CPC. Because right now there's no, no one is filling that position. It hasn't since we've started the CPC in for more than 10 years. So do you think we vote on it or does it yep. not have a final? Okay, all right, I, let's vote. I think CPC has enough of a financial impact that it, it's not weird for us to vote on it. Okay. In my opinion. I'm, yeah, I agree. I'm not the only opinion. I think this makes it, it makes a lot of sense. You're going to get real representation, real local representation on the committee. Right. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Uh, that's unanimous 600. Zero, zero. Article 18. I'll make a motion to approve Article 18 as written. To the second. Second. What is the Alice property? I'm sorry. It's the, it's that small barn that's right behind Used to be attached to uh, to the old highway garage many, many moons ago. 
right behind the new building that they just put in. Okay. Yep. Right near the new pro property, the new one. Okay. Off Merrigan Way. Where this was. Right. <laughs> Um, nope. Is there a prospective use for it? Yeah, we're, we're hoping to sell it to New Pro. Okay. Yeah. yeah, New Pro is a, yeah, New Pro has expressed interest in it, um, and so we're going to talk about. I guess the DPW currently uses the building that's there to store stuff that they almost never use, but New Pro is expressed possible interest in replacing the building, but they want the land so that they can beautify their property and it would put it on the tax rolls. They don't want to look at the broken down growth, basically. <laughs> they the can improve. On the bay right and, All right, and improve any it. discussion? <laughs> no. You guys ready? All those in favor? It's unanimous 600, Article 19. Um, there, there wasn't a dollar amount put into this, and Casey and I were talking about this today. I, I thought the select board indicated that they wanted to use six hundred thousand, yes. and then if we didn't spend all of that, it would go into pre cash. Okay, yep. and then so, we transfer back to, um, or, or we get another payment from the state. We'll transfer it back in the fall. Right. Anything back into it. So, um. So we didn't want to be presumptuous and put a number in here until you were at the meeting tonight and could make a decision yeah. or or could tell us yeah. that you definitely wanted that. We do. Okay. I think we do based on the fact that we got more issues. So. So the dollar value y'all are recommending is six hundred thousand. Yes. From the moment. general stabilization. Yes. Yep. And the, at the and moment we'll read that general stabilization. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it will require two thirds. Yes. How much is in general stabilization now? A million. Um, almost a million five. <laughs> so say... I would like to, has anybody, I, I'm going to just make a motion and see if you guys agree with me. I would like to move that the Finance Committee recommend Article 19 up to $600,000 taken from general stabilization. I'll second that. And then the thought would be if this ends up saying a, something 600,000 or less and it comes from general stabilization, you don't have to put that in the recommendation. It would just say finance committee recommends. Mm -hmm. And it'll be a specific amount in the, in the motion anyway. Yeah. And yeah. that way it can be the, the, when this gets posted, it'll have finance committee recommended in it. We have to say any money left over goes back to general stabilization. Where does it no. go? That's well, they're saying it's going to go to free cash. So yeah, if we don't say cash. that, it, it has to go. To it free has cash. to go to free cash, so you can vote it to go back to stabilization in the fall. If, if otherwise, it goes to free cash. Well, yeah. it goes to free cash. It has, has to go, go to free cash, cash. so we can vote it. So it, it, it yes. So. Okay. Got to take a trip. So yeah, mark yeah. your calendars, everyone. Trip around the world, back. <laughs> So what, what that does, though, which is fine if we decide that, is that it puts trust in the select board that the select board will spend it appropriately because they could, um, I mean, we could get another million dollars or something from the state mm -hmm. and they could spend a million six on road repairs and move on, but they're going to be, right. this is trusting that they will be responsible people, which. And the only reason we're doing this is because we're refunding the, you know, Rescinding the borrowing authority that we fought so hard right. for. So, you know, we'd love to. We have so much more to do, but you know, we'll we'll walk that battle another day when we have to do some more work. No, that's an article twenty. Yeah, right. correct. That's right. why this one's first. <laughs> if this passes, then we're going to rescind the entire five million. Otherwise, we pass the first. Rescinding first. And then they voted the second one down. We have a six hundred thousand dollar mm -hmm. holding mm -hmm. right. yeah. I'm, so I'm, hopeful, I'm hopeful we'll get another distribution, but 
I don't know if it's going to happen before June 30th, and I don't know how much it's going to be. I mean, it's I, it's a formula is unknown from A and F on how they came up with our percentage to begin with. So, is this six hundred thousand something that's already been spent, basically? Yes. Yes. So, but and it's a sidewalk reconstruction, but is it mostly just road? Mostly roads. Okay. It's almost all roads. So, yeah. Well, I wondered why it says it's sidewalk because that also is a like a. That was, rigor that was part of the wording of the original. That was the original wording. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Yeah. Just to cover any sidewalk stuff that we did. Okay. Any discussion? You guys okay with it going to free cash and then move forward? Yep. That's what has to happen, right? Yep. All right. All those in favor? That's unanimous six zero zero. Article twenty. Make a motion to approve Article twenty as worded, as written. Second. So it's it's open ended there. Rescind um, a portion or all, and mm -hmm. as as Tim pointed out, um, it's kind of dependent on the vote in front of it. If 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 Article Nineteen passes, it's going to be five million. All five million is going to go. And is it required to have a two third vote? How much to rescind the borrowing authors off the already. Oh, I don't. I don't know that it. it I, don't, does. I don't think it does. No, okay. I would. Maybe maybe that was intended to be on nineteen, Casey. I think nineteen needs a two thirds. Did it require it a two thirds? It, it, it does. Require a two thirds at town meeting to um to pass the borrowing authority and move it on to the election. It, no. Typically, it requires the same quantum vote. It was um, yeah. at town meeting. No, it wasn't. No, oh, yeah. it, it was two thirds at town meeting and simple majority by the electric electorate. Yeah, same quantum vote that was required. That's why I thought it had the same quantum vote, Margaret. Okay. I could be wrong. Maybe Lisa will tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't Probably be easy to get two thirds on reset. Yeah. I, I, I don't think it'll be as strong as we both if they on two thirds meeting. You know. Yeah, I can't imagine that anyone have a problem with it. Somebody will, no doubt. So <laughs> well, there probably will be some pointed questions about why did we approve this and then well, we'll we can answer those for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any other any further discussion on Article Twenty? All those in favor? That's unanimous, six zero zero. Article 21. That's a home petition. Home petition for 16 and 17 year olds to be able to vote. My first question is whether this has financial implications. Mm -hmm. I think it has operational implications, yeah. Uh, finance, because they'll vote on the budget. Will this yeah, because they'll vote when on. like this will the voting rights 16 and older will move like but there's kind of separate right now on separate pages that'll move together so it's not so yes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and what does this mean so somebody in town submitted this and correct mm -hmm. does it just have to be a single person just writes in no the, i think there's 15 people have to get together i think and request a, okay so yeah. they had a sign like mm -hmm. there's a they came yes with. they had to do a full-on petition it was reviewed by cassie cassie town, uh, yeah the town clerk and then by town council that it was properly done. And was there like, I mean, maybe there's no financial implications, but was there reasoning for this? So, yeah, so they, uh, there's been a lot of work going on at, there's been a lot of work going on in the governmental classes at Frontier, and there's been a group of students and uh, some teachers getting together and wanting to um, promote um, education and voting and uh, town governance. Um, they wouldn't be able to vote in any state or anything. It's just local. And really all this does is push this to 
uh, the state, the other towns have passed it in the Commonwealth, but the, the, the state legislature has not taken any action. They're hoping that an, if enough towns come together, the state legislature will finally take some action on it and l- allow children, uh, or people from 16 to 17 to be able to vote just on local municipality stuff like elections or budgets or that, but not any like Okay, you know, so presidential elections. So right. I'm still understanding what the vote's for, but so if this passes, still nothing happens unless the state approves it. That's correct. Unless unless the legislature legislature approves it. It. That's correct. Yep. yep. Legislation would have to take action. They have it so far. I don't know whether it's so if we ever had an election where it's municipal and state or national on the Ooh. same ballot. There not really. They, really, not, they really. cannot vote yeah, in those possible. elections. Financial so in, in that case, you're going to have to be prepared to hand out two ballots, right? It, it, there would have to be a, yep. a ballot for the children. Yep. There would have to be a separate municipal have to ballot. The local and state election ballots. They'd have to be on separate days. Oh, my, because you can put. Yes. Yes. They can't vote on a regular. They couldn't come in and vote on that ballot. That right. would be two separate right. Or, separate or, or you would have. In order to make it efficient, you could print local election ballot and a federal and state election ballot, and the 16 and 17 year olds would only get one, and the rest of the people would get two. I don't know. Yeah. This is That's another question, question that probably state legislation. You would have state have legislation. Have, yeah, would have to deal with it. You actually have to have you have to have two check-ins. I mean, I don't know if Cassie has yeah. weighed in on this yet, but I'm sure that she'd be able to weigh in on this from a very practical perspective. Yep. There are a lot of things that have to happen when you separate ballots. So if they pass it, it'll get it'll get very expensive for the local communities when we go to implement it. No doubt. The original question, do we ever have them on the same day? I can't think They of... can be held on the same day. Um, yeah. You can actually place a local, if, if, I, if I'm, re- it's been a while, yeah. but um, if I'm remembering correctly, you can actually um, put a local question on a state election ballot as long as Correct. you meet the state requirements for doing so. Right. Yeah. So we have it. So we were really unhappy because the library vote had to be its own day and we had to do a whole separate library yeah. vote day, which cost us another election because we didn't get it together in time to get it on the ballot that we were voting anyway. And I can't remember what we were voting for, but yeah. Yes, that's exactly right. Because uh, they missed a deadline. July, yeah. It has to be in an early. Yeah, it's like July or something for November. Yeah, it was the beginning of August. Yeah. So this is a potential cost of two thousand yes. to run a separate election. Yeah. Well, I mean, about twenty five hundred. Kudos to the the advocates, uh, the petitioners for, for this, because it is we do need young people to to get involved. I I my own that's my personal opinion. However, there are practical implications, uh, financial implications, lots of them. Do we think the term municipal election in your means? For a municipal office, or does it mean voting at town meetings for budgets and parts of all that stuff? No? Another really good question because, in order to qualify to vote at town meeting, you have to be a registered voter in the town. So, how do you separate you know, one, one from the other? It's a, a lot of things to consider. Okay, so I think we've established that there's financial implications. Would yes. I like to make a motion for this? Repeat that, please. A motion so we can vote. Would right. anybody like to make a motion on Article 21? I make a motion on Article to approve Article 21 so we can discuss it. Okay. We have a second. I'll second that. All right. Any discussion? Next, uh, just made a motion so we can discuss it. I didn't have somebody presenting yeah. pros and cons about this. Well, they can do that at town meeting. I'm sure they plan to, right? Don't you think that someone will speak yeah. to this at town meeting? Undoubtedly. Well, I mean, for like... Right, right, right. right. That's part of, it's part of the agency. Yeah. I've raised two kids. I'm not sure either of them would have been competent to make to vote when they were 16, <laughs> let alone 17. <laughs> I know. Honestly, they are. 
Uh, has Cassie, um, does Cassie have the ability to reach out to her peers, um, especially in those towns that have um, no. approved it or who have taken it up uh, to find out if there is any documentation that could be presented to town? Okay. So the only ones that I think have approved this are cities that do not have to have the same level because a city can approve something that doesn't necessarily have the same scrutiny. They have a different approval process. From what council tells me, um, Cassie does have the ability to reach out, and she already has. Um, I don't know exactly all the information she's gotten, but she was cautious about this mm -hmm. without putting words in her mouth. It is, it's a citizen's petition. I'm just saying it's another issue is why, why not start with 17-year-olds? Maybe that's a political decision, but. Um. Well, I think part of the thinking is that you can get a driver's license at 16. Oh, and, yeah, that's um, and as to the, the quality yeah. of a person's mental capacity to vote, that's ageless as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. But I, I, I beg to differ. <laughs> I mean, there are probably things that teens specifically, you know, uh, you might question their judgment. A 19-year-old is very but, different from you know, a 17-year-old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, everybody's different. Anyway, that's, everybody's it's not something yeah. we brought forward. It's something that yeah. residents brought forward in a, you know, a civic-minded way, and people can differ. Yeah. yeah. It'd be nice yeah. to quantify the, the financial the financial implications of this. It's hard to... It's is hard that really to how we would vote on it? Based on the cost of an election? Well, no, because I think there. I mean, there's more than that financial implications. I could say. Oh, yeah. Uh, about. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I think I, you can quantify it. Finance. So, at town meeting, that vote is definitely not purely on financial consideration. Um, the discussion we've had in the past with the finance committee is that when we're voting on things, we're voting on them through a financial lens. So we're looking at the, the financial impact on the town, including the town's people. So there could be something that may not directly affect the budget, but affects. But there's always a judgment value call on financial decisions. Yeah, absolutely. Otherwise, we just vote everything down because we don't. Everything has a financial negative impact. Well, it, it's well, no, it's whether it's worth the money. Right, we vote on the budget. We decide all the stuff that's presented on the budget is worth the money that we're spending. So what if it you cost worth whatever it would cost to do additional elections or whatever we have to figure out? Well, th that brings up an interesting question: What actual benefit is supposed to come from this, other than kids at Frontier feeling like they're participating? Well, citizen engagement. I mean, that could be a pretty strong argument that seniors in high school have been exposed to enough that they should be able to vote, given how much of their lives is impacted by elections. I mean, wh where that line goes down, I don't know, but 18 is arbitrary. So, um, yeah. Are the petitioners presenting something in writing ahead of town meeting on this? Do we know? I have not seen anything. Okay. I was going to reach out and see if they had contacted Dan to see if he was going to allow anyone to speak to it. Um, I think it was Jessica Corbin from the school committee in Sunderland that was behind this. Mm -hmm. So we can just ask her for what she's presenting to Sunderland. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's on Sunderland's ballot, I believe. I mean, you know, um, more. Okay. If she's willing to do it. Yeah, if she's willing to speak. personally do not feel like there's sufficient upside to counter pretty much any cost. <laughs> and I my opinion, but yeah, that's just me. And I suspect there's going to be significant um, financial implications, both operationally and well, operationally and for materials, the running yes. of the elections, you know, two separate elections at times. And uh, so, yeah. I, I, we don't know what the financial implications would be. That's we know there will be financial implications, but they could be minor. We don't know. No, I suspect. 
Do you think it's going to be a lot I do. to hand out two pieces of paper? No, it's not only not that because that. the town clerk is responsible for maintaining the entire voters list on a state database. So she's going to have to find a way. And again, she, she'd need to talk to cities that have adopted this to find out how they're managing it. But she'd need to maintain two separate two separate lists in the VERS system. I think she's I think she'd have her hands full with it. Well, you know, uh, one, ass a lot of I would, one assumes that the state which, who has, which has to approve this would um, come up with a, a system that says, OK, 16 year old person is on a, on the electoral roll and they obviously age one year from the date of their birth every year. And that will, the software would be upgraded to transition them into a registered voter. But this is a, there's a lot of questions about this. Is it happening anywhere in the state? Do we know already? It's been approved in, yeah. It's been approved in um, like uh, Cambridge and, and several but, other but Amazon. But not implemented. Not implemented because the legislature has not taken any. If the legislature shakes it up, are they going to do it for individual towns? No, or statewide? I think they would do it statewide. Oh, well then. It's going to be a they're... while. Yeah. It yeah. just, what they're looking for is an, uh, enough of a momentum from the community's sure. local yeah. to make this a issue for them on the state level. Right now, nobody's really addressing that. So there's a group, my understanding is this group is trying to get it approved in as many communities across the Commonwealth as possible so that so there no is pressure problem. on the state to do some sure. kind of yep. so movement on okay. it. So there's no financial impact on us on this town next year or the year after, most likely. So I, well, I, I would make a motion that we uh, either table this because we don't have enough information to take a vote. Well, the town's going to vote on it. Um, well, the town. I understand that, but this is fine, whether we have a recommendation about the financial impacts of this, right, is our role. And I guess I'm suggesting we, as John has said, we really don't have a lot of information about it. But we do know it's not going to have any impact on next year's budget because it ain't happened. Well, it doesn't matter. It's not just next year's budget, right? No, but uh, pretty much this is the recommendation. Okay, fair enough. I'm voting on next year's budget, though. I um, in my mind. Okay, <laughs> uh, I'm not not really in favor of this, but I also think that I am for clerical. So when you get your driver's license at 16, that's when you like register to vote and you get a little thing that says, okay, you're, you're going to be registered to vote when you turn 18. So there is probably like some mechanism there. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. that. It's not too far fetched to see. That would have to be implemented at the state. I'm still not, I'm, not, I'm just saying that that's probably <laughs> part of this whole thing. Yeah. There is like a, it's, there's a starting gap there. Starting. The okay. state is going to have to address. Oh, that. the state would have to do a lot on their own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so right we, now, we have a motion and second on the table to approve this as written. So you want to make a, a different motion to amend that? Um, no. <laughs> Anybody else? No. Do we need to discuss this thing? No. Else has All right. All those in favor? What do we? We're we are voting on Article 21 as written, recommending Article 21. As we're, so approving it. Recommending it, right? Recommending it. So all those in favor of recommending Article 21 as written. All those opposed. All right, so that is two zero. So the finance committee does it not recommend. All right. <laughs> So those are all the articles we've been through it. We have, I don't know, maybe six-ish that we're going to have to go back and look at again uh, after the personnel board's public hearing, which is next Tuesday, the 21st. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anybody is available every What date are we looking at? <laughs> Did they meet on the 23rd, you said? Uh, oh, can I take a moment to suggest that the, the town calendar should have on the 29th that we're having an annual town meeting at 7 o'clock? It should say that. It should say that. Yeah. I know it's not on there. It's not on there. I know. And I hesitate to send anything to anyone because 
Is I don't seven? want to think people I'm micromanaging. I, I noticed that too. And I was actually looking up to make sure I had it on the right date in my calendar book. And I was like, hmm, that's funny that this is. <laughs> I'll share. Casey? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Can, can we have Kevin put up the signs in town? And He's, we're already planning on it, but we don't want to do it before the information session. Which is Why? which is has been scheduled. Why not? Because we want people to go to the information session, Trevor. Well, you still need to tell them the town meeting is on a certain We're date. We're going to. All right. I just want to get it up. We're already talking about it. <laughs> All right. Let's let's go back to the meeting for a sec. Um, I, so next Thursday, the twenty fifth, a week from this Thursday. Um, there is the only meeting is a remote meeting, so we should be able to meet in here. Is, is anybody available? Anybody not available that day? Anybody care what time we meet? 5 p.m. works for people? Is that early? Let me short the 25th at 5. 25th. I'm going to start at 5 30. 6 6 p.m. I guess. I'll definitely be late if it's before, like I, I'm gonna be I'm gonna try to come. Six is probably better for me. Okay, so we have two votes for six. And I'm fine with it. For me, six p.m. Six p.m. Okay. It's gonna be a little bit shorter. We only have a couple more. Yeah. yeah. All right. What? Do they meet also at the same time? No, no. I I have a senior housing meeting and an ACD We're gonna we're gonna put. Uh, yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna approve our things or not approve our things. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I don't think it needs to be. Yeah. Thursday, twenty fifth at six p.m. Um, so the last thing I have, which I, I was desperately working on this afternoon and don't have together, is the information I was going to present this coming Thursday on the budget. So there's nothing to vote. On, and if anybody's sick of talking in this league, but I was going to just show you what I have and get feedback mm -hmm. on it. Um, like, I would be I offended if anybody wants to go. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> For another thing. All right. Uh, um, thanks, David. So I'm just going to, mm -hmm. and it's not in order or anything, mm -hmm. and I'm going to apologize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, this coming Thursday is the um, the information session. I just wanted if people have feedback or comments. Um, That's at six p.m. Six p.m. Thursday here. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. That's this Thursday, the the eighteenth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so here's what I have um, in no particular order. Um, so we have the stressors on our budget this year. Utility costs went up quite a bit. Benefits and insurance went up quite a bit. Um, personnel costs baseline is 4.5%, which is the 2% in COLA plus the two and a half percent for step increases and there's contract salaries. So whatever. Not those stressors? Yes, these are all stressors. That's under the big title stressors. Yeah, kind of maybe it should be a subtitle. Well, external stressors, personnel. Like everything concerns. external stressors is stuff okay, we can't okay. do anything not about, external. Right? The utilities okay. went up, the insurance went up, we can't think about that, They're, right? Not. And then there's a couple specific changes that I wrote down. Um, there's two key positions that are turning over the accountant and the highway superintendent. So we have some additional money in the budget to cover that. We are continuing to adjust to decisions that we've made over the past several years, like um, the assistant town administrator adding a planner, the clerk and the treasurer split. Um, and the like. there's just stuff in the budget, increases in the budget that are the number of hours that each of those people are doing and all that kind of stuff. So it's sort of follow on ramifications of that. 
There's the, I'll come up with a better way to word this, but the SCEMS new management has come in and wants to get some things in place to operate uh, in a new Management. manner. It's self-sustaining manner, right? Yeah. There we go. Oh, I like Let's that. Say, I like that. <laughs> in a more self-sustaining manner. How about the, 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 the how about the, yeah. uh, the road damage? That's not omnibus budget. That no, that's separate. This is this is just omnibus budget. Just on the omnibus budget. I mean that was a cost, but that is the yeah, whatever. That's a good point. Said last year. Um, I I have that somewhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think that it would be well. I don't know because it does feel like you're doing budget. Uh, like, well, okay. Doesn't say on the Put this somewhere it's else. But it's true. Else. We're taking we're taking that out of. Maybe you should head that on the this budget. budget stresses. Okay. Um. There's the the PFAS testing and the new test wells on the test well monitoring thing, and then the legal expenses. The retainer went up, the contract negotiation went up. Um, where this all is, so what I did was went through. So I went through the budget line item by line item, and I looked at the change from 24 to 25, and if it was. Um, over two and a half percent and over, I forget, like $3,000 or something. Then I started and looked at it. And these are the ones left in there sorted by the amount of money. I combined all the benefits into one. So that's $209,000 in benefits. I don't, oh, you changed the screen, but we're not seeing it. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I was like, you. it sounded like you were talking about something different. I can't believe yeah. it. So I'm sharing. I apologize. Share, share, share the whole thing. This way I'll end up showing you my email or something, but whatever. Yeah. Um, so here, sorry. So that's what I did. FY24, FY25, here's the delta, here's the percent increase. And then I just sorted it by the dollar value. And then I went in and looked at what I thought the reason was behind it, oh, which great. is how I came up with that list. I can email this to you if you guys want it. It's a bit of a mess. But oh, well, when you're, you're ready. I so, it's great. so if we go down by dollar value, SCEMS is the what we just talked about. Highway, payroll, there's some turnover money for the new superintendent. There's the increased role of the assistant superintendent. And then there's like the regular, you know, contract increase for their payroll kind of stuff. Police payroll is per their contract. I don't think there's anything particularly new in there. Um, the accountant salary is the turnover for the new accountant to have the, the second person. Select board staff salaries, the assistant town administrator got a plus up. The planner, there's an increase in the planner, which looks to me like it's more hours or, or, or something. But um, is it the... I think the planner was, was standard. Um, the assistant town administrator was brought up a few steps. As a plus up. Yeah. So, okay. Um, Test well monitoring, we were just talking about the PFAS testing and the additional test roll wells that were drilled last year. The senior center expense went up. That was increased retirement um, because of increased staff was the biggest part of it. Um, yeah, there was also increased, actually, you know what else is in there is increased work due to the grants that they're bringing in. Um, I should put something on Okay. Um, town building maintenance, the biggest part of that was the utilities. It was all like heat, water, sewer. That that was the big increase there. Board of Health went up and it sounded like there, there was an increase in the amount we're paying each person, but most of it is the increase in the hours required because there's more traffic food trucks, and there's some backlog of work for recording some inspections that happen or something like that. Insurance went up. The cost of the cruiser went up. 
legal, um, it was increased labor council because there's some contracts that are going to come up for negotiation well, this year. And school too, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 They're, 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 they're all the at the same time. Yeah. And the, like the retainer went up also, like the, the baseline retainer that we pay. Um, town clerk went up. The town clerk went to full time, the assistant clerk part time. So that that's more of that working that whole thing out. Uh, and select board administrator expense went up for mainly meetings and training. Um, and then there's some decreases. Uh, board of Health went down because there's grants covering some of the costs. Street lights went down because we shifted over to LEDs, right? That's why they went down. Um, Treasure Collector went down because there was a change in hours. Tritown Beach went down because they, oh, I can't spell vegetation. They restructured how they're doing the personnel with the gate guard thing. Uh, and then there's less in there for the ve vegetation mitigation. And then we reduced the reserve fund. So those are like the major changes. Um, back to our little PowerPoint thingy. So that's how I came up with what I wrote on here. That's great. I don't know. Okay, I think it's very um, here's the split budgeted recurring expenses. What I did for this is I took the budget that we had. I added SCEMS in to, to put it in the omnibus budget. For education, I added into education the Smith Volk, and we have a separate line item that is benefits for education. I took that out of benefits, so this benefits is decreased by that amount and added it to education. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit more that's something well, else. Like that Medi I didn't, Medicare insurance didn't do, yeah. uh, can be broken out. Workers' comp can be broken out. Um, it just but it's a, not broken out in our I, in our unemployment. I mean, the schools we don't fund unemployment. We have to pay up front, and so that actually costs us money when they decide to lay off. Right, money. right. So most of our unemployment costs are due to the school laying people we off. Don't, yeah. yeah. So Julie, there's when you say sixty-one yeah. percent, that's really not the true cost. So last, so last year I went through and we came up with a number for all that, and it, it it's not huge. So it might be like sixty-two percent or or something like that. I, I mean, I can go, I can get a number from you and fix it by Thursday if, if okay. we want to do that. Do you uh, have year on year for, for uh, well, not necessarily in a pie, you know, in state pie charts, but do you have year on year for growth in each of these areas? Yep. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> That that's in our um, financial indicators okay. that we actually do. also what drives down it. that percentage is when you added in scams by adding in the scams right. to the pie chart, you are driving down the percentage of the education cost. Yes, that's cost. Correct. So yeah, I it's misleading, and I am resentful of that because our budget is truly sixty eight percent. 67% minimum based on my calculation. Well, there there is, so Julie, there is a certain portion of our retirement costs in the general fund that are applicable to um, school aides and other okay. personnel of the school, which is about 200 and I want to say close to 270,000. Right. And our, I, so that, so it, it could add up to a, it oh. does. It does, Brenda. So you add up all on these your things. Schedule. Maybe we can touch base, and you can give me those numbers, and I can work them into this also. Okay. Thank yeah. you, because this is the story. If you want to look yeah. at it right after, when I'm fighting for That's financial aid, that would actually be great. Because Julie, then I don't have to figure out tomorrow's schedule. Yeah. I'm I'm not trying to give you a hard time, but no. when I testify to for rural aid, I, I'm it is truly close to 70% of our budget when you add in all these costs okay. and they are cumulative. And, and the thing that is really discouraging is the house budget was filed and they are giving us instead of $30 a student, they are increasing it up to $104 per student. Okay. However, they cut the rural aid from 15 million to 7.5 million, mm -hmm. which means that we're gonna be paying more for our budget Right now, if that's if we don't get the Senate to up it back up to fifteen, um, and the elementary school is using what I think eighty four thousand dollars of rural aid to 
to. That's right, because we, we have been getting a rural aid, so and they now, for the first time, Darius put it into the budget. And if it's not there, it's it's serious, actually. So I'm sorry. It's just, just as, that, a, as a procedural point. Um, could we adjourn the finance committee meeting and continue with the review of this briefing so that I can finish my minutes and leave as a point of personal preference? So if only you leave, then we still have a, a All right, then I will remain. Okay, no, I will remain. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can just write. I need to send in. Why don't you just leave? No, I will just say um, if, if we don't vote on anything, and we're, we're, we're not planning to vote. We on do have a recording, Jim. This, and then we're going to adjourn, so we can just send you an email and tell you what time we adjourn. And who okay. did it? And but who motions? Yeah, but y'all will have to promise not to do anything substantive. <laughs> we're we're going to vote on everything. Well, we have a recording. You it, can it. always go back and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you have to. Okay, thanks. Um, this is that going to be presented at town meeting? I hope. What's that? Is that going to be presented at the town meeting? I hope. So what we've done before is we did like a a long presentation at the whatever this thing on Thursday is, and then a really short one at town meeting. That's maybe three, four, five slides. Um, so if I get my act together and get this done, I can have the short one for town meeting ready for us next time we meet. I wish. Historically, how was the turnout that, like on Thursday in the past? Has it been well attended? I, or? I, it depends. I think what really what's important, John, is it's taped. And then Jonathan is from FCAT is very good about making sure it gets posted immediately so people have a chance to review it on the YouTube. Okay. I, I don't really think that we get very many people here, actually. We, well, at least since. 2020 in the pandemic, there's been like one or two people here. Um, but mostly it's on tape and then it's available. Right. And I and I think we get quite a few based on people feedback to me, people do really appreciate it. And, I, and I'm only giving Ju Julie a hard time is because I'm trying to hustle for more money for schools and you know, you know it's, it's, a, it's yeah. really important to have that okay. number pretty high. Yes, we can. I'll make a motion to adjourn our meeting. All in favor? Good Aye. Carolyn Nessai. Chairman McDaniel, aye. Thank you all. 740. 740. Look, she's talking about this. Wait, she's talking about this happening at the point. The information session. That's happening Thursday night. Oh, oh, oh. Thursday at six o'clock. It's, it's, yeah, it's Thursday at six o'clock. And is that here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Is it, is it on the calendar on the website? It is. Oh, okay. It's going to run hybrid. Oh, there it is. Yeah. I saw that. Okay. Six o'clock. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Fine. Here's budget by category percent change. I don't know that I'll present this, but right. just in case anybody's interested in looking at that. Uh, look at scams. Uh, well, we knew that one was big. Yeah. Yeah, we did. So I wanted to say that Sunderland responded saying at this moment there's a big food for Esau. Okay. Oh, well, oh uh, good. The voting thing you mean? For scams. For scams. Scams. Sorry. That's okay. Um, this again, I'm not really planning on presenting, but I was just putting it together. I'm looking at it. So on the left is the dollar value change. On the right is the percent change in each of the categories that we usually look at. So general government, public safety, education, blah, blah, blah. Um, debt service and benefits. This does not include SCEMS. So you can see the percentages and the dollar values. If we add up, we have education, we have benefits, and we have debt. Everything else I put into non-education. So that's general government, public safety, public works, human services, culture, and rec. The dollar value is kind of close to the same education and non-education that we increased from last year. 
Um, and then the percent change. I was just making sure it's not a quorum. Julie, I'm looking for you. So. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was checking. I was rolling. Um, and then percent change there. The schools have done really, really good this year. They, they have. And I, I some, somehow we have to acknowledge that they've really come fruit through for us. Yeah, they have. I mean, some sometimes we've had double digit increases in the past. Well, so maybe I leave this in and in, in that pre presentation. That, I, I mean, yeah. to be fair, I'm here. I am crabbing about that you're not making the numbers high, but I, I really feel like the schools have been really, really working hard. And that's why I want to acknowledge that Darius did use the rural A for the first time because he, he always felt that that was not reliable and, and have the house come through with a cut. To cut it in half is terrible. I'm hoping we can get the Senate bill to you know, negotiate up. This is too much data to present at the meeting. I will not be. I had this in here just because we would talk about it and we ended up talking about it. So that's you that. Have, We've seen you this were a one. Plant to, um, so could show her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is not updated yet. So don't look at this. Yeah. So FY25 is the name is 24. But what I will put in it is the revenues used for recurring expenses, mm -hmm. like in big category. Um, this we talked about. Uh, you know the dollar amount that we're allowed to go up under two uh, uh -huh. on two yeah. and a half. Yep, is really important. And then the growth dollars, so that people understand that between two and a half and our growth, I mean, we have a couple hundred thousand. That's it. Yes. Yeah. So under the tax levy calculations, there's an increase of three point four nine percent. Um, the operating budget itself shows an increase of 4.4%. So it's showing that the budget growth is outpacing the our, our ability people, to people just don't understand. Yeah, people don't understand don't understand how little money we have to work with from one year to the next year. And that's why we're always hustling for more money. Margaret, I'm just curious and and uh, you seem to have a good grasp of this, so ask. <laughs> so, is this like um, partially this particular year? Is this an effect that's happening with these percentages you said? So, scams have gone up considerably. Yeah. We, this is the first full year of the planner function, yeah. and we're bringing on yeah. a part time clerk. Yeah. Um, so, once that's all absorbed into this, is it going to look like uh, a different animal? in the next two years because it's all part of the budget now? Well, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm that is a, yeah, that is a layered question because um, right now our dependency on free cash this year has increased by I think three times, threefold uh, from, from last year. And um, if, if we can manage budget growth, for example, not add any more positions. Don't see huge increases in health insurance costs, you know, um, and, and other big jumps. If we can manage those expenses and we can maintain or increase our revenues, we're going to see more stability. But right. but the problem is but the problem is budget growth outpacing those those recurring revenues. Yeah. But I, I think the changes that we have, we're not going to be talking about no, new changes for the next year. I, and yeah. I and I have faith that Josh will have rev will increase revenues for the scam. That's gonna that's gonna play a big role too. We'll have to see how that works out because this year obviously there was a big impact. Huge, right. huge. Yeah. And it's but, not just it's not just scams. Right. So but it it's they certainly do take a chunk of free cash. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, because I mean the left the chart that she showed, I think it was either two fifteen or two. 2015 to 2018, we were at like 500 plus. And then this year we're at six, 690. 624 um, here. Yeah, yeah, this one. Yeah. Um, so we're at 512. Yeah, 2018 20. was a big average, well, probably in adjusted dollars too, that would look different. But it, mm -hmm. it's definitely variability there. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, 
100,000 of that 694 is definitely one scams. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah. Anyway, that's it. Yeah. I'm just curious. Okay, so you have a better craft. Oh, no, no, you're, you're no, no. So the no. other thing is that personnel costs are always going to go up more than two and a half percent. Right. And that's why. And so the more people we have, the, the bigger problem. The, the, yeah. The, the, yeah. the faster that problem is going to evidence itself. Yeah. That's you know, why I was talking about. Right. Okay. Are we contractually required to give a COLA because we no, have, no, you know, and so contracts are all point, subject to negotiation. And at some point, it's all sort of going to come to the point where good intentions and reality will collide. Yeah. And you don't. Know, it's not because you don't want to reward people for good work. Exactly. Or, um, you know. This is the nature of operating under a revenue-based budget. Right. Right. And so that's Just, in my mind an argument for. Okay, well, yeah, we struggle for this budget, but if we go for an override, are we just not making ourselves struggle anymore? Because, you know, and, and I don't have an answer for that either. Mm -hmm. It's a, I would be inclined to struggle several more times before I wanted to do an override, unless there was some like major thing like you've identified that uh, the scandals or whatever, that this was, this is logical to do. Um, mm -hmm. But eventually, because inflation, goes up and mandates come in, we're always going to be behind the eight ball at some point because we will never be able under two and a half to keep up with all these changes. Right. Like Julie said, you know, even if SCEMS is able to stabilize and become more self-supporting, we still have to struggle with personnel costs. I mean, it's 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 the town's obligation to manage yeah. personnel costs. It, and right. um, you really have to you really have to weigh that. And if you have, so if you have, um, you have your two and a half percent and you have some new growth on top of that, and hopefully you have growth in the local receipts and stuff. And so if you add all that up together, the hope is that that would somewhat keep up with the personnel costs. And I think what drives you to an override position, I think the override is in there for times like right now when we just have we just had a couple of years running of big inflation and that that big inflation caused all of our non-personnel costs to go up, but it also caused us to give raises that caused like everything to go up. And so I think that's what should trigger an override mm -hmm. more than anything else. You don't think the four and a half percent every year is going to trigger an override? Eventually, I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. No. So I wonder how other municipalities are dealing with that. They, I mean, they must, they must have the same problem we do. Uh yes. I mean, some commute. A lot of communities are basket cases. Truthfully, mm -hmm. we're doing really well. By comparison. By comparison to some. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, to some. <laughs> what are they doing? Are they voting overrides? Or are they not paying their people? Or not paying their people what they're worth? I should say. I, I think probably both. It depends on the mean that you go to. And you have to look at types of overrides too. Yeah. Uh, so if, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, we could get in, on. In I some think, sense, yeah. we get excluded. That's kind of like a pocket override. So it, oh, sorry. Uh, but it's but it's yeah, and it's it's finite for the right. term of the and debt, right? Or an override, right? Yeah. You build a new base. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it's one other thing I was. Going to ask you about, but let me think about it. You guys keep talking. Yeah, what the uh, the state's um, dashboard? What is it called? The gateway dashboard. Yeah. They have all that data, John. If you want to go on the state's dashboard, mm -hmm. da uh, gateway, it's um, divisional local services gateway. They have override data for various yeah. municipalities, and you can see whether overrides have passed or failed. Mm -hmm. Um, so it gives all that that good information. I, I don't think overrides in, in the recent past have been very palatable. I mean, that's just my guess. Um, but there are instances in certain municipalities where they've been able to thoroughly explain the need for an override and people have people have bought in. But it takes a, a lot of work, a lot of work to, it, to it sell does. to get an override. I'm not, ad I keep sounding like I'm advocating for an override. I'm not really advocating for an override, but I don't feel like we can keep doing what we've been doing, especially this year, 
and last year where we are raiding all of our, we're, we're not putting any significant money into capital. Um, we're sort of raiding our, our funds that are sitting there and we're to the point that we're putting money in. I mean, that that's very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and I, 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 I don't think we should keep doing that. So we need to like next year going into it, say, well, we just need to keep that in front of our mind. I, I think one of the biggest things is climate change is not, has not been funded. And we are going to have climate impacts. The roads themselves have not been funded. Roads and sidewalks have not been funded for years, for many years, and we're unable to fund them through local resources. So this is a, it, like Julie said, this is a, this is a problem and we, yeah. we need to, um, we need to, to address, to address it. Right. We have to. Was that um, new chapter 90 money? Was it 119,000? Yes, got? that, is that, that, is that, that was. We did add, to, add to our chapter 90, what we normally get was maybe 360. Right, right. That's, that's a transportation bond bill that they passed. It was a 25 million extra, and we got the night. It turned out to be what, what 119 or something extra. So um, that'll do two miles of road. Yeah, is that, for, <laughs> is that for this year or the next year? No, this is for this year. And we have, yeah. like, we have a huge, our number of road, miles of roads. Right. Um, well, else. they also put 150 million towards the small bridge um, program, which is. We could really for us. that yeah. because that will that program will actually pay for fate for engineering phases as well so that is something that could pay for itself right and i mean you know those are the things that really rural communities the small bridge program is what we live on so but it truly is for small bridges mm -hmm. i know <laughs> very <It> small is, <laughs> um, i know well some good yeah, news yes. um i just asked about new pro and it's getting a 70% deduction and a reduction in its taxes. Mm -hmm. They still paid $19,881 this year. Mm -hmm. So when they're 100%, actually they reach 20% deduction in, the, in three more years, I think, maybe four. Right. You know, we'll be getting significantly more from them. That's so and, yeah. and, that's we'll, the and, the, and their assessment will be, you know, they'll have the like the bills go up because, because the building. Yeah. yeah, they're still building the building. That's good, That's yeah. good news. So, so it, I was projecting, you know, close to seventy thousand dollars based on the current valuation if they were paying one hundred percent. So that's good. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're a little bit helps. Small. Yeah, and and but if, again, I mean, budget and if the governor's if the governor's um, empowerment act passes, then you know we'll bring the vote to increase the meals tax and the room tax for another yep. percentage. And that's so that's an additional revenue. Good. And we have been really increasing in that. Single family tax bill, we saw this in the um, annual report. This is single family tax bill in constant dollars. So the orange is what we saw right here. No, yes. So this is dollar value, single family tax bill. The orange is in real dollars. So I can't find my mouse here. Just so you can look, if you just look at the orange, you can see that it has increased year to year. If you include the effect of um, inflation, thank you. Um, you look at the blue one, the single family tax bill has really held pretty steady or even dropped in constant dollars. I don't have an inflation, oops, I don't have an inflation number for this year, so I couldn't do it for this year's money. It just goes through last year, um, but that, I find interesting. Um, and that that's it that I had prepared. The only other thing, um, you know what? I'm not even gonna talk about it now. We'll do it another time. Um, so that that's what I have together. That's um, excellent. I will, Thank you for I will make it smoother and, and digestible by Thursday. If anybody has, like, if you go home and you think of something that I should include, send me a you know, Brenda, I'm looking for um, 68%, 69%. Oh, do you have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. <laughs>